Welcome everyone to the hardest Stark of Two challenge ever done. Can you beat Grandmaster with just a single Protoss unit type? A couple months ago, I did this challenge with Terran, and after that, I took on the amazing challenge of doing it with Protoss units. Some of these units you might think is very possible, like Stalkers, sure. Adepts only, I can see it, but Sentries only, Disruptors only, sounds incredibly difficult. I'm even gonna do the Pro, by the way. Let the games begin. The first unit for this challenge is going to be Stalker only. My opponent is a almost 5.3k MMR Grandmaster Terran. And one thing I thought was really funny to see, uh, I'm not sure if I said in the intro actually, but I played about 130 games for this challenge. It was incredibly, incredibly difficult. Uh, definitely the most difficult challenge I've ever done. I think I took twice the amount of attempts that the hardest 1v7 insane AI challenge took, so that's a lot. And you can really see me grow throughout this challenge. So at first, my Protoss gameplay was pretty lackluster. I mean, at some point, if you guys didn't know, I used to be a high Grandmaster Protoss. That's a long time ago. So I definitely know the tricks. But these maps and stuff, it was just like at, at the start, you're going to be able to see it in this game too, I believe. My Reaper walls were always wrong and I made so many small mistakes. It was funny. But you can imagine throughout 130 focus games, I did improve a lot. So that improvement is going to be quite funny to see. Now, the Stalkers and the Adepts are going to be the easiest units of this challenge. In my opinion, most people said Stalker. I actually talked to some Protoss players. I tried to get some advice and tips and stuff on how on earth I was going to complete this challenge, right? And they all said, well, at least Stalkers is very easy. Uh, I wouldn't say it's very easy, but it's, de it's definitely the most doable one. That's what they said. But I actually think Adepts is probably the easiest. With Adepts, it's just, I don't know, it's such a thermal unit, you know? You can shade in and out. You can do these cheeky outplays. You can make them early. You can proxy them. You can do whatever you want with them. It's, it's just great. I freaking love Adepts. I guess I wish, you know, Terran had Adepts, or maybe I should switch to Protoss just for Adepts, because I freaking love them. Now, for this game, I had a pretty simple strategy with Mass Stalker, so you could think you should just go for Blink right away, but I think Blink is mostly strong in combination with, let's say, an Observer, a War Prism, stuff like that, um, and I'm not really allowed to make those. Now, there's one exception I should mention real quick uh, for the Protoss challenge, and that is that I am allowed to make Observers, or detection only. So I'm not allowed here. You can see a very good Reaper wall. It's not even close, actually. Um, but I'm allowed to make observers just for detection because, I, I mean, it would be kind of lame if I just lose to, like, a DT every time walking to my base or something, right? But I'm not allowed to use them besides that. So, you know, I mean, if I make five observers and get perfect map control with them, it's basically the most valuable unit, right? And I don't want that. I'm just going to make them for detection if I really have to. Like, you can make cannons, for example, against, let's say, Widow Mind Drops or, or Banshees or whatever, right? But let's say someone defends with cloaked units and I'm just there not being allowed to make detection. That'd be pretty tough. So my strategy here is actually to just Chrono Boost 3-4 Stalkers right away from the start and try to do a lot of damage. So the hardest balance to find with Stalkers is Stalkers is a really good active unit, but they do cost a lot to be honest like they're not cheap so if you make a lot of stalkers early on your economy is gonna suck if you expand early on you lose the pressure right so you want to find that balance so what i thought is i'll just put on a lot of early aggression like very very early chrono boost four stalkers then go into blink and take a third and i can tell you that every mass stalker game i played ended up being uh, quite a bit of chaos like it's really not easy to navigate the games i mean Th terran very often for example tries to harass you with something like a Hellion drop with a mind drop or Banshees or whatever. And if you don't have like observers or if you don't have like maybe an early few adepts to scout out, it does become quite difficult to defend against everything. I do really like to make pylons around my third bases to scout. Now here you can see the bunker. He built it further back. I, I want to say I was quite lucky with this because that's going to allow me to walk past. Realistically, I would have walked past anyway, but it would have been a pretty crazy decision if the bunker was just on the ramp, right? Right now, he made that choice for me a lot easier, and it ended up being a good choice. If he had a tank ready there or a cyclone, that would have been a perfect bait, but he didn't. Uh, I mean, I, I assume it's going to finish pretty soon, but for now, I'm going to get the damage with the four stalkers that I want. And the reason that I made four stalkers is obviously that they... Uh, one shot marines and SCP, so it's just the perfect number. As you can see, I keep, uh, just as I said, that I misfired, but I keep picking them off one by one. And here is the Widow Mind Drop. At this point, I can only pray that there is no armory, so they're not cloaked, and it looks like there the, there wasn't an armory. I mean, if I had to make a robo there or a forge, that would have been quite tough. Now, the Widow Mind Drop is doing a pretty good amount of damage here. This was a mistake by me. Uh, I lost a couple more probes than I should and damage on the Stalkers. I thought all the Widow Mines had already fired, so that's why I didn't pull the probes. Don't try that at home, guys. Very, very risky. 
Now here I'm gonna apply something I've learned from watching a ton of high-level Protoss games, and that is that you need to be... Sounds kind of funny if I put it this way. You need to be as annoying as possible at all times. It'd be very easy for me to just retreat here and give up, but now I can just deny his gas, and since I have Blink, I should be able to get out the safety anyway. So I'm trying to make this game as hard as possible for my opponent here. Probably going to lose one of those, right? Yeah. Uh, but I'm going to get a better back for it. That's beautiful. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to lie. That was completely unintentional, of course. I didn't have any idea that the medevac was following that path. Maybe I could have seen it if I paid very close attention on the map, but uh, I did it and I killed it on accident, which is nice. Now, there's an unseached tank there. That is the second tank, I believe. Let's see. Yeah, it is the second tank, but I'm still going to go for it. I only lost one or two stalkers there. But even if I lost four stalkers, I think I would have gone for that because just imagine this scenario, right? I'm only allowed to make stalkers. We get into the macro game. I have 40 stalkers, which sounds ridiculous, but I'm not allowed to make anything else. And my opponent has four tanks. It becomes incredibly hard to blink in and fight. But if it's three tanks instead of four, I mean, tanks are always scary, but it makes a difference, you know? Or three, again, three instead of two. Maybe he was only going to make two tanks, and now he only has one. So I think that's a really good trade. Now, I'm going to make more gateways here in favor of forges. And the main reason is that... I mean, upgrades are pretty good on Stalkers, but for the most part, what you want to do with Stalkers is get free trade. So you blink away as soon as the shields on your Stalkers are down. Notice how I'm trying to send Stalkers everywhere and make pylons everywhere. This is just for scouting for drops. Normally, this is what you would use an Observer for, right? But here, I don't, I don't have those. So I'm going to be spreading my Stalkers around and the pylons a little bit. And there's one tool that I really like when playing Protoss, by the way, and that is the tool of Recall. That is something that the other races don't have. I mean... For Zerg players, it's not that big of a deal because their units are, you know, freaking hyper fast, so they don't really need to recall. But for Protoss, it does happen that you're out of position. Like, sometimes you just don't pay attention. Medivacs are pretty small on the minimap, so if you miss it one time and you're out of position, you could die if you don't have a recall. So, recall is a tool that I do really enjoy using. There, we killed another tank, which is really important because it looks like there's a big push coming. It's funny to look at the gas, by the way. I've only made three gases, but yet I have so much more gas than normal because I didn't make a Robo, Robo Bay, uh, let's say Charge or Extended Thermal Lance or a Disruptor or Colossus, stuff like that, right? Now here I'm starting to get the feeling that I missed his army because there is no army here and those Marines look like reinforcing Marines, so that uh, further confirms my theory. And now we're going to end up probably in a base trade unless he's about to come back. There you go, you can see his army on the minimap, and this is a pretty good scenario for me. Protoss is really, really strong in base raids against Terran. The problem is that I don't have any of the classic units that make that a reality. The reason why Protoss is good in base raids is because you have DTs, obviously really hard to keep your orbitals alive and scan and stuff. There I got five of my gates depowered, which is not as painful as you would think because I simply don't have money to spend. But yeah, I don't have DTs, I don't have disruptors, stuff like that. I also don't have that many bases to fall back to. So we definitely ended up in a little bit of trouble. Now what I need to do is micro against this army for an eternity, right? Because stalkers can slowly chip away at the army. I can force stims. As you can see, those medivacs were quite low on energy already. So that's how I want to play. These stalkers, this is the big downside of Theranus base trading. Your production is all in the same place. So those amount of stalkers, I think it's... It's 12, actually. I was going to say it's only 10, but it's 12. Those are going to make sure he can never make a unit again, right? I'm on top of his production. Everything that pops out is just going to die, as you can see here. And now we just have to fly things away. He did kill one Stalker there. That's a mistake by me. I didn't realize the Stalker was so low. But that's well done by him. Good targeting. And now we're going to be targeting those uh, command centers. I think one of them probably got away. I'm not 100% sure if that's true, but I feel like there was a third CC that got away, perhaps. Now, there is six Stalkers in my base, which is not quite enough yet. I mean, in combination with battery overcharge, it's going to do a lot of work. I don't think I've ever seen this before, by the way, where... Uh, that, that was poor micro by me, not going to lie. I, I don't think I've ever seen this before, where I just... I don't have money, despite getting my production depowered. Like, you always see Protoss just stacking up, like, 2k, 2k minerals, because their pilots get depowered. But somehow, everything was spent. Now, here we're going to go for the recall. You could think this is risky, but my army is actually significantly stronger, because there's no energy on these medevacs. If I was him, I would probably have tried to target the Nexus. In that case, this game would have been a draw. But now, I am going to kill his units, and the question is, how much does he really have remaining? Thank goodness, I have a couple of workers left. That Stalker casually has 11 kills, by the way. That's really not bad. I have a couple workers left. Uh, my bone is not being revealed, which means he has a command center, so I was right. Actually, not sure whether that was the natural or the third CC that I don't remember seeing escaping. Doesn't really matter. But it does still have some stuff out on the map, and that is scary. Let's see. So the main base, 
is not producing anything. Uh, every single building escaped from here besides that one barrack. There's one raven next to my base. And I do know that he is going to at least have a couple units here. Now, here I was pretty happy that the auto turret got nerfed because I could just pull my probes and kill it. If it wasn't the case, I would have had to run away or lose four probes again, which would be pretty, pretty painful. Now, what I want to do with these stalkers is go around the map and check where he has stuff. There's one move that's very, very popular for Terran in base trades, and that is to save the starport and start making cloaked banshees from them. Okay, so we found the orbital. That is a massive deal. Hey, his economy was actually better than ours because I think I had... Oh, no, I did have 12 pros. Okay, never mind. My our economy was definitely better. I think... Uh, I thought we had like six probes or something, but it was 12. Okay, so it's better than I thought. That orbital is either going to die or going to burn down. Let's see. And there we find the cloak banshees exactly. And now... Uh, this is the point. I'm pulling the probes here so he can't move further into the mineral line. He almost got a really big shot there. Uh, I can actually bait this with the Stalker too. Let's see. He's going to go for the Stalker. He is in the now. I'm going to make that Robo, like I said. Um, I could have made a Forge here, to be honest, and maybe defend with a Cannon. But the truth is I just need one little bit of detection and this game is over because my opponent clearly does not have anything left. Unless the Tekla dies before... Oh my god, you could just see it finish one shot before it dies. Now, good thing I have a battery and I'm going to show you guys the power of the battery here my opponent is probably uh, hoping that he can you know kill every single probe before like an observer comes out i didn't i didn't overcharge it or maybe i didn't have it actually maybe i just thought it wasn't worth it now that banshee i do know that from my terran experience if you finish a banshee from the starport and cloak it instantly it's gonna run out of energy pretty fast now my battery's finishing you might be worried from my pile on here but my battery's easily gonna finish in time there we go. And then we'll be able to blink on top of the Raven. The Observer is going to finish. And that is going to be it for Stalkers only. Look like we're in a bit of trouble. Well, we still got it done up against a pretty good Grandmaster Terran. The second game is going to be Adepts only. Now, once again, you're going to be seeing me... Uh attempt the reaper wall i i don't even know anymore if i succeeded in this one or not i failed so many of these reaper jump follow-ups that i don't even know whether this one was successful or not our opponent's going to be an almost 5.5k grandmaster terror which is very high i think that's probably already top 100 so a little bit higher mmr than the last opponent now i'm just gonna go for a normal gateway here there's one trick i really or not really a trick one strategy i really love to do with protoss that i'm not showing yet but i'll definitely show it a little later is that when i play against terran and i think i do this because i've been tortured myself a lot of times by it i like to send a probe instantly and just kind of harass their first worker making the barracks i mean it's just it's really annoying first of all like you're already going to put them on a little bit of tilt and then at the same time you do get a lot of information if they're not paying attention you might kill an sev i think i think there was actually one game where i killed three SCVs with my probe scout or something like that which is uh, pretty ridiculous all in all this video is gonna have some absolutely ridiculous games i can tell you guys i don't think you're gonna want to leave before seeing the sentry only game for example i think the height Templar game was also freaking insane just overall I uh, absolutely love some games in these challenge now I'm gonna go for a core first this is something I do uh, that means core before Nexus of course um, that's something that's just normal to do against Terran mostly because it's really annoying to deal with the Reaper if your gateway unit is late right now you know if you're not allowed to make adapter stalkers that already becomes a lot harder like in sentry only for example you need to defend it with a you know a sentry and a sentry i think barely beats a reaper in a one-on-one -on -one, but then at the same time it doesn't heal so it's it's already a little bit sketch but i'm going to be allowed to make adepts now i am pretty curious whether this wall is going to work it looks decently solid it definitely looks better than the last one because the last one wasn't close at all this looks decently solid now with the stalkers i went for four uh, stalkers in the chrono boost because that's the magic amount required to one shot the, the terran units but with adepts it's only three and i think it's actually a pretty strong opener to get three adepts really fast and just go for it now this does look like a proper wall of there we go we successfully did it that's fantastic now there's another mistake i made in both games i wonder if you guys realize but in both games I sent my pro back home too late and barely lost it to the Reaper before it arrived at my base. So I, I wasn't kidding, guys. Like, I, I'm definitely a little rusty here, uh, but it's all going to get better, I promise. Now, there's Adept number two. The Adept scouted, or, or sorry, the Reaper scouted my Twilight Council. Normally, that's annoying. Normally, you want to try to hide your tech. In this game, I don't mind it at all. Because no one would play Glaives. Glaives is the upgrade for the Adept. Gives them more attack speed. It's... 
fallen out of fashion dramatically, I want to say. At some point when Legacy of the Void was released, you saw this every single game. Like, usually accompanied with Phoenix, but could also just be straight up Glaive Adept. There were all Lins, there were macro games, mass adepts everywhere. But people don't really play like this anymore. So when you see a Twilight Council, the first thing you're going to think is Blink. And then there's maybe like 10% occupying your mind is like, this dirty Protoss is going to play DTs, isn't he? But no one would think of Glaives really. So do I mind this being scouted? I, I don't think so. I think it's weird enough that it's completely fine for me. Now, three adapts are going to shade across, and this is the kind of move, if you guys will ever see me, or would ever see me, I don't think it's going to happen, sorry guys, but if you guys would ever see me compete professionally as Protoss, you would see me do stuff like this all the time. Like, three adept shading, like, this is just so beautiful. Look at this. Three SCVs going down already. I think that is a mule and the fourth SCV. And I can even start one-shotting these Marines. I'm not quite sure if I want to. Yeah, okay, I do want to, apparently. Like, I wasn't sure if I did, but I definitely did want to. You can see a lot of Marines falling already. And the thing is here, guys, I am playing a pretty snowball-y strategy, right? Like, at some point, wait, maybe I can micro and save it. I I can't believe that survived. I thought I was being on Copium there, and I thought I was doing something that had no chance of working, but it did work, and that's fantastic. But I do want to save the Adepts as much as I can, because it is a momentum-based attack. Like, I got more Adepts coming. Notice how the Reaper keeps checking on my Twilight Council, but that might mean that the Reaper doesn't see this attack coming. And this is eight Adepts that are going to have Glaives. Now, there's a drop on the way to my base. This could be Marines, most likely Widowmines, though. That is definitely the most common. And if it's, if it's three Widow Mines, it's going to be even better for me. Because if it's three Widow Mines, let's see. So far, it's just two. The Micro was decent. Oh, that second Widow Mine did kill a few too many. But that means that he doesn't have factory units at home to defend. So this Mineral Line is completely exposed. And it's not like I'm necessarily all in or anything. Oh, he sees the tank too close to the ramp. That is beautiful. That is, uh, I want to say, pretty fortunate timing by me. Like, that was, it's not like, a, okay, guys, the tank is going to finish at 4.55. Uh, Go up the ramp now. No, nothing like that. I, 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 I would like to pretend that that's the case that i just know all my timings that well but i'm not really that much of a timing guy and now we're in i do have to say i'm not quite sure if it made that much of a difference here i'm gonna shade past the SUVs. never want to get surrounded trying to target the marines the one downside of the adept is it doesn't have that much range but yeah i mean if he didn't have the tank there i would have shaded into the natural and killed every SUV. and just like i said i was confident in the adepts the adepts take a very convincing game against the grandmaster terran the third unit is going to be the Void Ray. That's right, Void Rays only. And we're playing as the highest LMR opponent yet. 5.8k LMR Protoss player. I think that is probably around top 50. And I can hear you thinking, how is that even... I mean, if you cheesed him, maybe. But a macro game with pure Void Rays? Not even a single stalker? Indeed, I... Not gonna lie, I was initially planning to put this in the cheese category. Kill someone with a proxy Void Ray that I could see, but... I had an idea. This game, I played against this Protoss player and I thought this. I'm gonna go for a one gate expand. One gate expand is a very debated build, I wanna say, in PvP. Some people think you're always gonna die to all in. Some people think you can always survive and does its way better. So what my plan was here was I would see if he was also one gate expanding. If he was one gate expanding, uh, which he's not, then I would maybe go for like a reactive proxy void ray. If he's gonna go two gates, I can probably bait an all in and just go really hard on the void ray defense and, and win that way. Now my probe died, but realistically I saw enough. I mean, I'm doing this on a map without a ramp. That is already quite risky. Notice how I'm making a fake zealot, by the way. That zealot is just to scare his probe away, of course. Like I'm not gonna finish that or anything, uh, but I thought that's always a pretty cool move making the fake zealot there. So there we go. I'm gonna go for a forge. Zealot has been cancelled, and this was the plan, guys. The plan was laid out from the beginning, and I, I thought this was a really cool plan. Because I didn't get the full scout, like I said, but obviously I have a pretty good idea. It's a map without a ramp. He's going for two-gate opener already. I'm one-gate. He might feel like I'm being a little greedy. So I'm pretty confident he's going to come with an all-in here, and I'm going to try to defend it with Void Race. I see a pylon there without a tech building, I believe. I'm sending this probe across the map mostly as a form of scouting. Uh, I don't necessarily want to harass the proxy or anything like that i just want to see what kind of units come across the map so there is the probe the probe is going to see that i'm making a cannon already i wouldn't be surprised if he doesn't pay attention and thinks it's a battery because how on earth would you have a forge this fast but you guys can see the idea right cannons batteries and a void behind a wall the best thing here is that my opponent can't even see 
if I have an expansion or not, right? Like, I think at this point, he probably realizes that I didn't have enough money for an expansion. I mean, that's a forge, two cannons, a battery, a stargate, and a void ray building. If I got an expansion there too, I was probably doing some kind of mineral hacking, which I don't think actually happened. So I think my opponent probably realized that too. But here we go. We're going to be chrono boosting void rays. And that scout with the probe I got was actually quite huge. I saw two adepts finishing late. Now, I do know that... You can go for like six adept openers, but you would never do that against a one gate expand because your opponent just walls off and that's that. But I did watch a, I think it was in the world team league, the highest level team league in the world. I saw a PVP there where there was a new kind of three gate robo where they just make two adepts, drop them in your base and then attack with the rest on the front. So I'm thinking maybe, okay, there I saw the prison with my pro. That was a very good scout there. Uh, at this point, I'm not sure if he's going to drop two adepts or his entire army, by the way. It's also possible he does that. But I did see that build. So I think there's a good chance he's going to drop those two adepts in my base. Now, I do have two void rays already. The wall at the front is looking pretty good. You can notice I'm making batteries and cannons already at the front. And now there's one mission. And that mission is to kill one adept as fast as possible. Because two adepts, one shot probes. Yep, you only need two for probes, unlike the three for SCVs. But there you go. I'm not going to lose that much in the end. And we haven't been attacked on the front yet, which is great. I wouldn't be surprised if my opponent is going to be too scared to elevate her into the main, knowing that I do have two void rays and I can turn off the prismatic alignment at any time. Now, there's one thing. Oh, that's a lot of stalkers. That looks like 10 stalkers to me. There's one thing that is really, really terrifying about these kind of games. Now, here the cannons are super useful. I'm just going to turn on the beam. This is going to be a really good trade initially already because I have the beam on. The battery still loaded because he didn't target the battery. This is a really, really good trade. And I'm going to explain you why in a second. The biggest problem in these kind of scenarios is that Void Rays against, let's say, four stalkers, they're amazing. But at some point... They get enough Stalkers to one-shot your Void Rays, and then the batteries don't matter. Stalkers can out-micro you, and that's when you're going to start being in trouble. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to counter-attack with three Void Rays. This sounds like an absolutely insane move, and you, you can make an argument that I probably should have stayed home, but I think at this point it was a great idea, because these three Void Rays are either going to kill him or force a recall. And I'm relatively confident that I can survive back at home with all the cannons and batteries that I have. Now, he can kill the pylons. That is a lot of freaking stalkers over here. Let's see. Is he going to go for it? Not quite yet. Probably when he sees the... Yeah, exactly. He sees the Voyager into the main and he's going to go for it. I don't have energy on the batteries, so I can't heal uh, up the pylons, but that's okay. I think the cannons did a decent amount of work. That is about eight stalkers left. I think he might have had enough mining to morph or warp in a couple more, but I guess we'll see. You can see I was there hovering the recall. I was thinking about it for a second. Look at this battery overcharge. That's incredible incredibly clutch that's gonna keep that pilot alive for a good while now he does really have an absolute buttload of stalkers i have to say that's pretty scary the pylon goes down and now what i'm gonna do is try to uh, repower these buildings over here i think if i repower these unless he has money for a nexus we should probably be in a winning position now i kill this nexus then i'm gonna bring the probes back i i could recall the void rays here but i don't think i want to recall them inside all of those probes now he's putting the probes here i don't want the probes to meet up with the stalker so i'm gonna wall it off completely and there you can see he probably does not have enough money for a nexus or he would have uh, started that already i think now, he does have two centers who could be scary. I mean, one of those is about to die, actually. Oh, there we go. He didn't pick it up. Probably didn't think the Voidra was going to kill it in the end. Now, I'm going to cancel that pylon and make my own Nexus on the low ground. This is going to force him to come over. But now, he's going to have to fight against four overcharged Void Rays in battery range with pros. And this is just not a fight he can win. My Nexus is coming up as well. And I really don't believe I'm going to lose every single probe here. And just like that, guys, Void Rays only beats a freaking 5.8k Grandmaster Protoss without cheesing that's insane the fourth unit is going to be sentries only and this is also immediately one of the absolute best games of the video maybe the best one and here you can see that probe scout i was talking about i have already evolved a little bit this challenge was very very difficult so this is already a little bit deeper into the challenge and here i am annoying the terran with my first probe now initially i was planning to put sentries only in the third category which is cheese because i could imagine you know Let's say winning with like a cannon rush with some sentries and maybe like doing a, you know, force fueling the ramp kind of thing. But I could never imagine winning in a macro game until I started trying it. And it's, I mean, it sounds absolutely absurd to say. 
But sentries are really pretty strong in combat. Like, I would really not think that sentries only can do something in a fight, but they were quite good. I had a game against a Zerg who I beat in a really nice macro game, but unfortunately that Zerg was slightly below the MMR threshold that I set for this challenge. And this Terran here was slightly above at, I believe, 4824 MMR. Uh, I think this is going to be the lowest MMR opponent I've played in this challenge, but still within the threshold that I set for myself. Now, if you're wondering how on earth could sentries be good, I don't really have a very reasonable explanation for it. The thing is, Guardian Shield is incredibly good against Marines, right? So against Bio, sure. But when the Ghost and Tank Liberators <laughs> win a fight, I mean, I can name so many units that just absolutely dunk on sentries. When those come out, I, I, I don't even know how to explain it anymore. Like, there's no logic here. But I do have to say, the start of the game here looks pretty all right. My opponent seems to be a little scared. He's going to expand on the high ground, I believe. And I say that because he only had one gas when I scouted. If he's doing another build with one gas, that'd be kind of surprising. I walled off on the low ground here, which is making me feel pretty safe. I do have to say, sentry opener, sentry first against Terran, has one really big advantage that I absolutely love. And that is that you get a super fast scout. I don't think it's possible to scout faster than this. If you open with a sentry first and you save the energy, you are going to have pretty much a guaranteed scout you're going to see everything that Terran is doing. The biggest downside is that a sentry is not as strong against the Reaper. So if a Reaper does come across, the sentry is going to survive. But then if the Reaper heals up and comes back, you might be in trouble, right? But for now, I mean, I have two sentries out. We already saw that my opponent went for Marine. This is actually a pretty comfortable position here. Now, the strategy, I have to admit, I was just kind of just YOLOing it pretty much because I couldn't really think of a realistic strategy that could work consistently against Terran. So I just decided to go for a lot of sentries early, maybe try to catch an attack. And here's the scout I was talking about. This scout is just perfect. We see everything that's going on. 320. I think there's literally nothing that Terran could have hit from me for which I would be too late to scout. I could have seen a one base Thoral incoming or even a proxy 111 or like a Reaper Hellion attack. This is just an absolutely beautiful scout. So this game, I decided to go for some pressure. I was a little bit upset to see that there was already a bunker up. Because if the Terran had scouted me earlier, I don't think he would have made a bunker. I mean, would you make a bunker against someone opening with a sentry, which has to be like the, you know, the least threatening unit there is? I, I don't think so. But I think because he didn't go for that Reaper, didn't see the sentry, he made the bunker. And I want to put on some pressure because if you can imagine, if I just go for like a greedy macro game, uh, you know, that's going to be a little bit sketch, right? Like I mentioned those tanks and ghosts. You know, having those against sentries, I don't think I'm going to have that good of a time. So now I'm going to have to pressure someone who already has a bunker up and that sounds kind of annoying. He's done a really good job scouting with that heli in as well. And now we can see... Oh, wait, that is funny. He had a Viking... Do you think he made a Viking because he thought one of those Phoenixes was real? That would be quite funny. Otherwise, I have no idea what he made the Viking for. I mean, I suppose he could harass, with me, uh, harass me with it at some point. Now, one thing that did surprise me, I have to say, is how many sentries you can actually afford. I thought I was being kind of insane by making four gate sentry. I was like, there's no way I can warp that many. But you, you can actually afford a good amount of sentries. I mean, I think I already have like 10, uh, 11 actually, and I can warp three more already. No, I don't have a third base, and I'm going to have to put some pressure. And now I can only pray that my opponent doesn't have a unit that's particularly good against sentries. But since we scouted a tech lab factory, that means there is either going to be a tank or a cyclone out. And apparently a liberator, because there's a zone right there. I'm not going to lie. As soon as I saw this li uh, liberator, I kind of let out a sigh. I was like, oh my goodness, why is there a liberator there? I mean, if there's something sentries can do absolutely nothing against, it has to be a liberator. It does so much freaking damage. And sentries are so slow to get in range. They have a small attack range. So I just set out on another mission, which is to contain my opponent. Now, the biggest advantage that I'm going to have throughout this entire game is that... At least if my APM keeps up, my scouting should be 100% perfect. I mean, I can see everything. Obviously, I can't always have Phoenixes every... Oh, he's moving out, and here's the power of the sentry. All right, okay, it's very pleasant to see he made a cyclone too, by the way. And that's going to be a lot of Marines picked off. Now, there is a tank, so I need to be careful, but... I feel like my strategy is looking pretty good here. My opponent didn't expect me to just contain him. He moved out a little bit too far and I instantly got some damage done. Killed a bunch of Marines, which is going to make his follow-up push stronger. And I have to say, guys, this strategy 
is freaking hilarious. Like, just look at the supply I have. It's six minutes, and somehow I could afford all of these sentries. I have 96 supply in probe sentry while getting a third base behind it. I have four gates, and I'm containing my opponent. I thought this strategy looked absolutely hilarious. Now, you can already see some problems because I don't think I can do anything at all against this liberator. Three sentries are not going to be able to tickle that to death. So I guess we're just going to try to start a cannon here with a bunch of probes and escape with the rest. But yeah, this is not, it's not a particularly pleasant situation. But all right, as long as we can contain our opponent on two bases, our economy should be good enough. Couldn't make sure I don't lose all of my freaking sentries to a tank, of course. That would be quite unfortunate, you could say. Now, which upgrades do I make with this? I, I don't even know. I guess sentries do have a decent amount of attacks per, per minute. So maybe you should go for attack upgrades. I don't know. Like, does anyone play best sentry? Tell me, guys. What upgrades am I supposed to build? I actually have no idea. Now, I am still trying to get phoenixes or, yeah, hallucinated phoenixes out nonstop. I can see the liberators moving on the top side of the map, but I'm not sure I saw it when I was actually playing this game. It doesn't look like it. I do see it sieging, I believe. Tell you yeah, exactly. But now, I'm going to have to send a bunch of pros to make a cannon here. Uh, I was very unfortunate. Every single oh my goodness that was that was ugly i don't even know what happened there with the last probe by the way it looked like it just straight up refused to make the cannon but all right that is a bunch of probes lost i still don't think it's the end of things i mean if you think about it guys i pretty much just need gas i mean if i have too many minerals i'll expand i'll make i'll make cannons but realistically my entire army is just sentry right like i'm not allowed to make anything else besides sentries maybe an observer if i went into some cloaked units my opponent I just saw him make a turret in his natural. Is he is he trying to scout for Elucidated Colossus? Or like, I'm not quite sure what it is. And at this point, you guys have to admit, right? I can make so many more sentries than you expected. Now, I'm walking back with my army. At this point, I was mostly scared that he sent around a double drop. My army looking pretty massive, but also kind of squishy, right? But yeah, I was mostly afraid. Like, imagine if a double drop gets into my base. Normally... Let's say you have eight gates, you warp in eight stalkers, and that's enough for a double drop, right? At least, now you might need some zealots, so you might need to pull the probes. But if I warp eight sentries in range of a double drop, I I think my, you know, Protoss commander or, or you know, my forces are going to be very upset with me. Because those eight sentries will not do a great job. Now, thank goodness I had these two cannons here already. But this is going to be pretty tough to defend. Though the force here is quite nice, I have to say. I thought that was going to be a lot worse than it was. And I definitely need to start making a lot more cannons because what can I really do against these drops with a lot of can without you know without having a lot of static defenses at least maybe not necessarily cannons could be batteries as well. Now at this point I'm reaching 150 supply of pure sentry and we're playing in someone who has tanks and liberators. I also only have a couple of bases here. Now what I'm gonna do with these sentries? Keep in mind the one thing you can do with sentries is you can be aggressive on the map because you have force fields though his army here is definitely a little bit too big especially with the tank sieging i had to get out of there i, I was okay fighting against the bio but i don't want to fight against the freaking tanks and now i'm kind of going to showcase that a little bit so i'm going to go for a counter attack because i can always force field his forces away if i have to keep in mind i can also recall these sentries and this could be a good move for me to kind of keep him back a little bit there you go going to kill a couple of cvs guardian shield going to be useful the drop is going to fall and now you can see the true power of guardian shield like those bio units felt like they should destroy me but with the guardian shield it is actually a relatively efficient trade and the force shield with the cannons is such a cool combination right like i feel like it looks awesome now the tanks yeah the tanks are just going to be an absolutely massive problem there i think i lost about six sentries I still have a ton. I mean, at this point, my economy is still better than the Terran. But would anyone say I'm in a good position here? I, I would I would say you're crazy if you do. If uh, if you're watching at this point, you're wondering, like, why the hell is this game in the video? Because you're you're about to die when he sieges your base. Like, in three minutes, you know, I can go make a T. And when I come back, you're done with the next unit. But uh, I don't think that's the case, guys. Definitely don't want to stop watching this game. Trust me. So I have another force of sentries that decided to send across the map. This is really just for economic damage purposes. Now, sadly, I lost vision on the high ground there but i did bait all of his units over to the third base so now i'll be able to run into the natural i have enough sentries to be able to kill the bunker man this looks so freaking funny i have to say he has like an entire bio army that just can't get anywhere all these scvs are trapped as well and this is such a freaking efficient attack i still have absolutely no idea how i'm going to be able to kill a couple tanks but these sentries at the front are doing an amazing amount of damage and this is pretty funny i don't think i've ever ever really seen anyone 
base trait with sentries before. I mean, sentries is a pretty good unit. Not to mass, but it's a pretty good unit, right? Like, you'll have a couple, and maybe you'll go for, you know, a guardian shield, or maybe, like, a couple well-placed force fields or so. But I don't think anyone has really sent 20 sentries with the purpose of base trading and ending up in this situation where the entire main base of the Terran is force fielded, and all of his production is stacked. Now, I'm trying my best to make bases around the map because I do need a way... You know, to get another base up somewhere against all of these tanks. I don't want to fight against these tanks directly, so I'll have to move my probes. Keep in mind, though, I can recall my probes. And I can recall the probes of both my bases. I think currently I have about... Oh, there's even more. I was going to say 40. I think it's almost 60 probes in my main. Uh, and once my base finishes, I could recall all of those probes away. Whether that's a good move, I, I don't know. I mean, the Terran could see me and hunt the probes. But I'll at least try, you know, have to try to set up a base somewhere. Now I got another cybernetics core building. He has a liberator on the ramp, which for me is already a sign that I can't do anything. Can I kill that command center with my sentry tickle beam in the bottom? I'm not quite sure. I don't think I'm going to be able to kill that, but it looks like a pretty funny... Yeah, okay, there's another liberator. Now he has two. Would be hilarious if I had killed that command center. Now the funny part here is my opponent's army is clearly better, but somehow... Don't ask me how. I think we have a better economy. And there we go. Recalling about... I, I think there's literally 50 probes that I just recalled. Not quite sure how many it is. 56 probes. Yeah, you can see it very briefly there on the, uh, the saturation of the Nexus. 56 probes I just recalled in one go. And all of a sudden, I have another camp set up on the other side of the map. Now, if I was my opponent... I think I would be a little scared of moving my units across the map because a lot of times he's tried to move like some reinforcements across the map and have them caught by force fields. So I think he might just think, okay, that army is enough. He only has sentries. I, I don't really need anything else besides these couple tanks that I have. I'm not going to reinforce. And that is the only way I could possibly break his army because his army is basically split in half right now. My army is split in half too, but I have him sandwiched. Though you always need to be very careful here. Like imagine if my opponent reinforces now, then I am the one that's getting sandwiched. Now maybe I can kill oh, just one Marine. I was hoping I could kill two. I don't even think I killed the one actually. I was really trying my best there. But my economy is kind of thriving somehow. I know it sounds absurd to say, but think about it, guys. I'm basically mining from three bases. Well, that mining I was doing there, my main base, I wouldn't really count it as mining to be honest. But let's just pretend I'm on three bases to make myself feel a little better. Now my army is getting bigger and bigger. How, I'm gonna, uh, how am I, am I going to be able to kill the four tanks that are there? I'm not quite sure. You can see every time I get anywhere close to those four tanks, I just kind of get obliterated. Now instead of trying to sandwich the tanks, I'm going to go for another counter attack. Mostly because I don't really think I can kill those four tanks whatsoever. It just looks like an RB that is a little bit too big. So now we're getting attacked here. Let's see if I can heal the pylon. I'm going to be able to heal it for a little bit, but obviously a little bit too much DPS in the pylon. Here, I kind of thought my opponent would have reinforced already, but he didn't. Now, thank to goodness I have another base down here. If this was my last base, I feel like this would be the game over. But I do still have that base over there. And now I'm going to try to take another one. Taking the gold from behind is always a cool move because no one really sees it coming. Now here I'm going to try to save the Nexus. He doesn't have that many units, right? I feel like he still should be able to kill the Nexus in the top left, but maybe not. Now, that army still looks massive. He is going to take down that base. I was really hoping at this point this army would have thinned down in front of my main base, but it really hasn't, and it looks like a massive army. Now, maybe with some good force fields, I can make some damage. Look at this. If I target the Medivacs, there we go. One Medivac is going to fall pretty fast. He misclicked as well with the Medivac, and we're going to be able to kill all the units. That was great. And it, you know, I have to say, it is pretty hard to micro against the sentries. It doesn't sound complicated, but somehow it's pretty complicated. If you get force fielded, your units are going to derp. If your medevac gets too close, it's still going to die. And now it is time that we go to break the tank line. And my option of choice is going to be to morph a bunch of Archons, basically. Here he scans, so those are not going to do much. But maybe the Archons from the low ground will tank a decent amount of shots. He does have a scan on the high ground, so those units are not going to do too much. But the Archons at the front are actually tanking. Look at though, the sentries are not being shot on the low ground. And the sentries on the low ground are going to win that fight. I have enough cannons in the main to hold for now. Now, at this point, that's actually funny that I... For some reason, I just autopilot. And I was like, oh, there's a gas there. And I tried to take that base from the front as well. It'd be pretty hilarious if you could actually do that. And just mine would, like, double the workers from the gold minerals. Sadly, not going to happen, though. So at this point, I have four Nexi. I mean, it looks like I have nothing, but I have four Nexi. Those are going to stay alive a lot longer than I would think. Biggest problem right now 
is that I simply believe my opponent's army is just way bigger. I mean, he had a couple liberators ages ago. I can only imagine he has a pretty... Si yeah, exactly. He has a pretty significant army and a third base. And here, the game is starting to look very grim for me, I have to admit. But I'm going to be able to take a lot of bases still. Unless my opponent attacks me, I have a decent amount of static defenses. I have recall available. So I'm going to recall to that base. And now I'm going to do the move I made before once again. And I'm just going to walk into his natural. Because I can force fill him out forever. Oh, he does have ghost now. So I need to be careful. He missed that EMP. Or rather, I ran away just in time. But he does have ghost tanks and liberators now. So I don't really know what I'm going to do against that. That's like every single counter the sentry has. I'm going to be able to force field them out and make... Uh, or and kill the command center. That's really nice. I'm going to try to keep the force fields up. There's a Liberator, but that... I mean, Liberators are good against sentries, but come on, guys. You just try to siege it on top of 18 sentries. <laughs> I don't think that one's going to work. Now, I'm starting to get a lot of minerals, but what I really need is gas. I mean, I guess I can make a lot of cannons everywhere, which is nice. This is doing an absolute incredible amount of damage, by the way. Like, I force fielded him out. I've taken all of his attention. His drop hasn't done anything after that killing the base in the middle. He lost the natural orbital. Now I'm going to be able to kill another Liberator as well. And keep in mind, those are among the most valuable units. Every time I can trade inefficiently, you know, maybe killing a Liberator is always good news. Now that army in front of my base is massive. At this point, I'm not going to lie, guys. If someone would tell me to stop griefing and leave the game, I, you know, I wouldn't even blame you that much. Because look at that army. What the hell am I going to do against that army at the front? It's like a million tanks. It's Ghost, Marine, Marauder, and Medivacs. And I have... I'm pretty sure, yeah, my entire army is 14 sentries right now, guys. Like, how many body units do you think 14 sentries can kill? The answer is, unfortunately, not that many. Now, I have been able to expand all over the place, which is great. And there's one more really cool move that I think I'm about to make. Check this one out, guys. This is going to be really cool. I can kill the mineral line from the high ground. Now, there's one tank there. But if I split my sentries well enough... Oh, I'm actually going to kill the Starport too. That's really nice. There we go. Look at this. I can force fuel the SCPs in and then kill them from the high ground. I can split my sentries a little bit so they don't die that fast. And this is obviously pretty worth it, right? Like, my opponent has very little economy. He might even consider coming back for this. And look how little SCPs he has left. There's only one command center, I believe, which is the one at the third. And then there is... Yeah, maybe like 10 SCVs or so. And at this point, I, I think I have like 50 probes. I know it sounds a little absurd, but I'm pretty sure I have 50 probes. Now, at some point, I'm going to run out of energy and the EMP is going to hit me. Ghost Academies, by the way, if you guys didn't know, one of the absolute tankiest buildings in the game. Like those things are just straight up unkillable. You can even consider building them in your wall because they are incredibly hard to kill. Now, there is no... Oh, we did actually kill it eventually. I kind of thought we were going to get EMP'd already. I'm just kind of waiting for the EMP to hit from downtown. And here we go. He's trying to mine from the same base, and I'm going to kill it in the same way. Five of the probably 10 or 12 SUVs disappearing instantly, even though I'm taking damage. And now... Currently, I'm mining from two bases. That's going to be a bit more soon. Okay, there's the EMP. I just recalled the probe, so I'm not going to be able to recall the sentries, but I think it's okay. Like, I just force fielded the ramp. These are going to buy a lot of time. Maybe I'm even going to be able to kill a medevac if I'm lucky too. Probably not the second one, right? Yeah, I don't know what his upgrades are, but at least I would hope for him that they're better on mine. So, okay. Situation. I have six sentries, but I have five Nexi. Uh, I don't have any production. I don't have that many probes. I have some cannons here and there. And my opponent has an absolutely killer army. I mean, if I keep going the way I'm going and just getting cannons everywhere and very slowly chip away at his army, I can kind of see it. But I there's definitely some luck involved here, guys. My opponent has such a big army. What am I going to do against it? He now scouts my bases in the bottom right, which I'm pretty upset about because this is pretty much my last camp. Now, I do have these hallucinated phoenixes going to fall back to the cannons. I'm going to pull the probes just so the, the cannons cannons do more work than they should i think i killed the marauder there which is pretty nice the probe is obviously not the most important if you look at the minerals you can or at the resources rather you can easily see that minerals uh, or gas is the problem and not the minerals so losing a couple of probes really not the biggest deal and it's gonna buy a little bit more time if i can kill a couple marauders there that's already worth it now my hallucinated phoenix there saw that there were no scvs being rallied to the main or natural or anything like that which means that i was indeed right that that is most likely his last command center we're gonna kill i think four units there which is also fantastic. And keep in mind, I still have the base in the top left as well. He killed the base at the, you know, the gold base in the top left, but not the actual top left base. So that is looking pretty good. I think once again, I'm back at up about 50 pros. Look at how I'm sending all these Hallucinate Phoenix out. I need to know every information or all information there is to know, of course. I kind of wish I had another base here because I feel like if this bottom right area gets killed, we might be in a little bit of trouble. 
And maybe we can kill a few units for free here. I think that was three tanks that I just saw. I'm very unhappy seeing that. Now, maybe it could be an idea for me to go for his base. Like, I definitely need to keep Chaos no matter what in this game. He's going to try to siege on the high ground. I think at this point I, almost, I should almost have a recall available. So even if I get into trouble, we could still be fine. Now, this camp in... Yeah, I don't even know what to call it anymore. The bases are getting really confusing. The top right, I suppose, is starting to look pretty good. The Elucidated Phoenixes are carrying my ass right now, by the way. Like, I can see his army movement perfectly every time. And I really feel like that is doing the job for me. I could have run into his army multiple times already. One really big thing, by the way, is... The, wait, guys. I'm not sure... I think my cannons might have killed his ghosts. Right? I don't see a single ghost here anymore, guys. I think my cannons could have killed his ghost, and I killed his ghost academy, so he can't make anymore. I kept wondering, like, there must have been one EP from downtown coming once again, just like the one in the main, but I'm pretty sure one of my cannons at some point killed his ghost, and he doesn't have a ghost academy anymore, so that is actually a massive freaking pickoff. Now, I'm gonna try running into his third now as a run-by. Let's see what he has here. He has a bunch of marines, but I can force with those. Like, once again, this is just fantastic trades. Like, this is really, really good. I'm gonna lose a couple sentries but at this point my economy is way better than his and that is not because my economy is that great but he yeah i mean if i had to guess i think his mineral line is probably fully saturated at this point so i guess there's 20 scvs here or so now there is a tank which is quite annoying i actually was thinking about going for it for a second the crazy thermal that i am but instead i'm gonna buy time by doing the same move i was doing before i'm gonna run into the main try to force wield the ramp over and over and back up at four next side despite losing a couple and here we go i'm gonna force wield the ramp again and kill a couple of these and if he tries to come from behind i can force wield the ramp at least if i'm paying attention i feel like there's a lot going on in this game so I'm not sure if I will manage to do that in time. But now my income is starting to look pretty healthy again. I've been... Oh, it does suck that he found, found that new base. I was kind of hoping that that was the one he would miss. And here we go. Now, unless he has the base on the left side, he should have absolutely zero economy. And maybe even better is that he has zero gas. So he's going to try to come up, but that's going to allow me to force build. And that's probably going to be another couple uh, marines dying, at least if the... Oh, the Benefax did heal a lot of them and they didn't quite die fast enough. But I still think I got a couple and his production is so bad that that's always worth it. Now, the, the thing that sucks for me here is that the tanks are pretty much undefendable. So every time he sends tanks somewhere, the base will die regardless of how many cannons. So I'm going to keep having to migrate. Now, there's a little army in the middle base that I kind of want to kill, but I just don't have the army for it right now. Now, let's do some sentry splits. There we go. Never seen before sentry splits. I think I only lost one or two sentries to that tank, which is a really good trade. And he flew his base away. This could be forward to where his army is, could be to the left or could be to the right. Now, these sentries do kind of look like they're doomed. That, I have to admit, that was very well executed by him. Like, really good surround there. The bunker with the Marauder slowing some of the sentries, then having a couple of Marines. Like, obviously, if I get the good forest with a lot of sentries, the army is good. But if you're surrounded, you have nowhere to go. The sentries are not going to be that efficient. Oh, for a second, I thought he was going to forget the boost, and I would get that. Now he's going to see I have way more bases than he wanted to see. I can guarantee you that. He was probably hoping I was finally going to be running out of bases. Now, here I was thinking, maybe I should just mine the main again. There's another tank, some more sentries entry splits i think that's maybe a new thing that we should uh, attribute to me because it's just i mean who else would you see split sentries and here we go we're gonna be able to kill so many of the SUVs. i boxed them in entirely now one thing to consider is that he might be coming back with his main army but i'm killing so many units here guys it's actually fantastic but here his army is looking a little bit too big i mean the trades are okay uh, but ideally i would have kept a couple of those alive or killed more probes for them now, how many gateways do I have at this point? I have two gateways only. I really need a couple more. I do have two bases. My bases on the right side have gone down, which weirdly means it'll probably be a good idea to take those again because he might not look there again. Now, he still has those three tanks and an overwhelming bio army. But I'm starting to like this game more and more. I feel like his bio count in particular has been trimmed down. He still has a lot of tanks. But he doesn't have that much bio anymore. At some point, I really thought his bio was overwhelming. Now, the bio army is not that huge. I am about to lose this production over here, though, which is pretty much 100% of my production until my other gates finished. At least I thought I built a couple gates. I'm not sure if I ended up... Yeah, I think I have... Yeah, I do have four gates right now, right? Uh, so that's going to be half my production die. I'm going to try to backstab him one more time. Uh, I don't think he had... Oh, the tank just came out and it's going to get forced. Look, that tank is stuck against the command center. So that one is going to die, followed by the SUVs dying. 
dying. And now his economy is finally officially gone. I feel like this entire game, or like for the last 12 minutes or so, he always had like 10, 15 SCVs. They were barely giving him some economy. And now finally the economy is officially dead. Now he has nothing left, or at least once I kill the command center, he will officially have nothing left. He did kill another base though. And he still has that big tank army. I... I'm a little bit disappointed that I didn't try to take a base in the right side. I think that would have been a really good move. But I guess if you look at my resources, you can't really blame me at the same time. Now, this orbital is getting really close to dying. I don't think he had money to make units. Yeah, you can see those barracks are not producing whatsoever. I'm going to wall those marines in. And I'm going to be chasing down that command center. I mean, in any case, I, I don't think he has... Well, I guess if he has a mule, he could probably repair it if he has enough money. Like, you need money to repair, right? So if he has a mule and enough minerals, he can repair it here. I'm going to trade a bunch of centers for one tank. That is a really good move. It, it always looks really ugly, but I'm very happy with it because that's that's one of three tanks gone that he's never going to replace, right? Like, that is an absolutely massive move. Now, I took the main base again, which he's probably not going to expect, so I do have that base mining once again. I'm going to make a lot of batteries here. Batteries are a big part of making a stand. If I have a super battery healing me, oh, it sucks that there's another tank there. If I have a super battery healing me, then I could maybe try pick off another tank. Now, here I come with the sentry flank. This is not just a sentry split. This is also sentry flank. I feel like new sentry terms are being invented as we speak. So that means we're going to kill the tank and we're going to kill the command center after that, which means he officially has no economy. Now, what I would like to see is me actually going, setting a probe to the right side to retake a base there. I mean, this is a pretty good stand, but I feel like I should be trying to take another base. This is the kind of game... Okay, there we go. Actually, he left the two gases alive on the bottom right side. So if we do retake that base, that is going to be you know saving us like 150 minerals on those uh, assimilators there i like how the gas in my main is freaking mined out how did that even happen i feel like this game was so chaotic was i even really mining at some point i don't even remember now you can see my opponent is flying the buildings to the corner this is not to bm this is just because he can't really win the game anymore or another, no that's not the right way to say it it's just he he can't lose the game against only sentries if his buildings are in the corner, right? So he's just trying to keep them safe, see if he can still win the game with his army, and then if he can't, I'm sure he'll leave, but maybe he has a good shot. Now here, I have a battery overcharge. This is very important. Look at his army. It's dimmed down so much, and his battery overcharge is going to give me a great fight. Here we go. I'm going to go with a couple Archons. Battery overcharge is going to be absolutely massive here. You can see the Archons are tanking like crazy. Keep in mind, he doesn't have uh, scans. Now, I couldn't quite reach the tank, but I killed a couple units. I forced out some more stims, which is usually a bigger deal than it's now, but the medevacs still have so much freaking energy. But even these marauders that I can kill, look how slow they die to my four sentries. Even those marauders that I kill are just awesome for me. Now I'm going to start saturating the bottom again. I also have this base on the middle right side. There are so many cannons here. It's going to take him quite a while to break this, actually. He has one tank. I think that is eight marines and two marauders. We actually have the same amount of units. Well, not if you count the medevacs. Then he has a couple more. Uh, his units are slightly higher quality, of course, but I have way more bases. I'm going to remake the forge. I'm going to send a couple probes to saturate those bases on the right side at some point. And here, I just have so many options to delay him. Like the sentries, he's never going to be able to chase me anymore because his army is not that big. Sometimes you can drop on top of sentries with the kind of army he has. But since uh, he doesn't have that many units anymore, he's not going to be able to do it. Now, my structures are slowly dying. I do think he realizes how many buildings I have at this point, though. We forced me to a lot more Marines. He's going to lose so many more Marines here. And that means he's only going to have tanks left. And I have three bases. And after 29 minutes and 46 seconds, Sentries Only has done it against a Grandmaster Terran. And this was an absolutely incredible game. Sentries Only proved itself to be a really good composition. The resources loss was awful. 26 against 50k. But this game was absolutely beautiful. And now it's time for the second category, the tech units. Now, the first unit of the tech category is going to be Oracle. This category has slightly different rules, as you can imagine. If I only make Tempest or Carry or something, I would literally die to one Reaper, one Zealot, or four Zerglings or something like that. So I'm going to be allowed to make five gateway units. Now, to be clear, those gateway units are not you know meant to win the game with like if i attack them with five adepts and then win with one carrier later that would that would definitely be a little lame right now those are just to make sure that i can you know not die to a single reaper or something like that and actually get to make the tech units that i want and that's pretty much the only additional rule so this is going to be oracles only we're playing against i believe a five five grandmaster terran I think it's the same Terran we played against uh, when we did Adepts Only. It's also one of my friends, so I hope he doesn't watch this video. Or, well, any view is nice, but, you know, 
maybe you've forgotten about this torture already and then here i have to remind it with this video but this is going to be oracles only and oracles only actually not sure if this is surprising or not. I think it's one of the stronger units of the tech challenges. There were a couple units I guess you guys are going to see later, which it was just... It was just a freaking impossible challenge. Like, some units are just so crazy difficult, but Oracles was one that I had a decent amount of confidence in. I don't think you can beat Protoss with just Oracles. But against Terran, if you get a little lucky, you can. Against Zerg, it was even meta at some point. I do believe... The game was a little different back then. I'm not sure if Oracles were stronger or Zerg anti-air was worse or maybe the follow-up. Sometimes it's in the follow-up, like maybe carriers were better or something like that. Now, this was a game that I played relatively early on. So you're once again going to be seeing me make a lot of crazy mistakes. Probably not even uh, the right Reaper wall again, as we know. But all right, I'm going to make a couple of depths here. I did have some trouble figuring it out which gateway units i want to make to keep myself safe because you could think you know maybe like adepts are really good because you can deny the reaper a little bit better but then again think about the widow mine jobs later on maybe then you want stalkers for example uh, so i wasn't quite sure usually i ended up making a mix here i'm just going to scare the reaper away which is nice i'm going to make a second adept now adepts are a bit more natural when you're playing stargate it allows you to save some of your gas and actually be able to afford Stargate units. And so here I'm going to go for a third Adept. And then I'm going to start making a lot of Oracles. Now as you can see, the Reaper wall is sound. I'm always happy to see that. You know, I'm not even... I mean, I, I played so many games, I kind of forget how these games went exactly right. But <laughs> I'm always nervous to see whether the Reaper wall actually worked or not. So I'm going to go for a couple extra gases here. What my thought was, if I want to win with mass Oracles against Terran... I need to always have a substantial amount of oracles even early on. If I, this was against Zerg, maybe I'd go for like a fast third Nexus and then start massing oracles. But against Terran, Terran usually hits really strong pushes in like the six to seven minute range kind of thing. And I just want to make sure that if they attack too early, I can just slap it down and then maybe do a big counter attack and get ahead that way. That was my plan. I was even considering just saving up like a bunch of oracles, like an absolute crap ton of oracles and then go in later. Here I'm going to snipe the, uh, I think that was the Reaper. I was going to say Helium, but I'm pretty sure it was the Reaper. I don't think Heli would die in one shot, so that's already quite nice. Now, sometimes I want to fake Warp Gate. I think here I didn't. And that's, I mean, it's a little bit sus, but it's also not something you pay attention to because there's no reason in PvT to not get Warp Gate. You see it sometimes in PvZ where you don't get Warp Gate right away. Actually, you do that against Terran too. You don't get Warp Gate right away. So you can afford your Stargate a little faster, but then you still build it. But there's no situation where you actually don't make Warp Gate, so I also don't think it's something they would pay attention to. Now, I believe with that Oracle, I saw a Viking. I mean, I didn't see the Viking itself, but I saw a shot that looked like a Viking shot here. I have five Gateway units. These are, you know, they were supposed to defend me against Widowmine drops, but I guess because he scouted a Stargate, he's not going to be making any of that. Notice how I'm going to start making batteries already before third base. If you see Cyclone Viking, and I know this is a Terran player, there is always a pretty decent chance the opponent is going to put on pressure. It's a very common way to play against Stargate, is just to uh, go for Cyclone Viking and push before they get, let's say, too many Robo units or something like that out. It's a very common strategy. Stargate is pretty annoying to play against, speaking from experience, so it's a very common way to just try and end the game before it really gets going. So here I saved three Oracles. The reason I went for three is because I can one-shot Marines and SCVs with this. Now, it all depends on if my Terran opponent is still at home, right? Yeah, okay, there's a Viking still there. I really hope he wasn't paying attention. Uh, because if he saw those three Oracles, that would be suspicious and it might lead to him scanning. That's not what I want to make happen. And now I'm going to hide the rest of the Oracles. I feel like three really is a nice upper limit for how many Oracles you can really build. If you build more than three Oracles, it's just weird, right? If Even if you build three... It's like, it's a, it's a little bit suspicious, but, but that's about it. You know, nothing more. It's just a little suspicious. Like, huh, it's one of those weirdos that makes three oracles. But if you make more than three, then it's just, okay, this guy is just doing a really weird build and he's going to either be going for like carriers or mass oracle or something like that, or maybe even mass phoenix. So I'll scan or scout his base, something along those lines. Now I sent some stalkers out on the map, uh, mostly just to see if I was being attacked or not. It's pretty hard to know where to position my stuff, especially considering I don't want to show my oracle. So I just decided to park my gateway units in front of his base. Those gateway units are not going to be able to kill a lot at all. I mean, as soon as he moves out, he's going to have stim pretty much in them. These units are pretty much just gone. So here, I'm scaring him a little bit. I see he has a wall off. 
maybe even learn that from me. I'm always a huge fan of walling off against Protoss players. Now, at this point, I think I'm approaching 10 oracles already. Yeah, I have nine oracles. I'm going to send them to the bottom left. Let's see what I can find. I'm going to start making a lot of cannons as well. Cannons, obviously... You can see in the last two games, Void Rays and Sentries, super, super important in this challenge. You need something to be able to defend with, right? Like, if you're not allowed to make that many units, you just need freaking cannons. I mean, you know, Oracles are probably pretty decent, but besides that, not that great. Now, I did manage to scare him off a little bit with my decoy units. That's really good for me because it bought some time, right? Like, I'm, I'm clearly not ready for a fight, right? I'm clearly not ready at all for a fight. Now, I don't see his units, so at this point, I kind of thought he was maybe going for a third base like a fake move out into a third base but the viking is in my main i feel like the only reason the viking would be here is to distract me from his attack at the front so that's why i started moving my oracles in he has a turret but i have so many freaking oracles that i'm gonna kill so much with mines are pretty terrifying though now how can i possibly at defend the attack at the front and now perhaps the most surprising moment of the entire video is coming for me his entire army stims in i have four oracles in the battery I look back and I have killed absolutely everything with like one fourth of my oracles. I have no idea how oracles are that strong. I'm not sure if, if, if this game was bugged or something, but I just killed his entire army with four oracles, two cannons and a bunch of pros while keeping his entire base hostage with 10 oracles. This was an absolutely brutal game with mass oracles. Unit number six is going to be Dark Templars. And this is one of the units I was the most excited for. I can imagine a lot of you are very excited for this one as well. Now, I just want to clarify something real quick. Um, it was a tough decision to decide where I should put the Archon. Because Archons, you can make them with either DTs or High Templars. So it's very hard to be like Archon only. Because then which unit do you make to morph it, right? So what I decided to do was I would make this challenge DTs only. And then the other challenge is going to be High Templars plus Archons. I thought DTs these was probably easier to win with than pure high templars in fact i think pure high templars is probably impossible unless you can storm someone's army once and make them believe that they have lost the game so they rage quit but that's how we're gonna do it anyway now a lot of games with dts only i struggled we played against a lot of mutalisks and it's you know you can imagine you need to have a lot of maneuvers and, and tricks up your sleuth to be able to do that even this game is going to be a really epic game with mutalisk involved now, so far, I'm just doing a normal expansion. I also didn't scout too early here. I feel like I did definitely experiment with the scout timing. Sometimes I would go really fast. Sometimes I would go a little later. And I realized that for some of my builds, scouting early is very important. For some of them, it doesn't really matter at all. And against Zerg, it's, there's another layer to it. Because if you scout really early, so for example, sending your first probe, you can deny the hatchery. And then let's say you're playing mass adepts right let's say you're going for mass adepts against zerg if their hatchery is on another location further away at the third base then your adepts have a better chance to get in but when you're playing dts what kind of happens is the zerg will always make a spore at their outside bases right so if you go dts after a hash block then their spore will be at the front and they might see your dts faster now there's always a way to go around this but i just decided for it for this uh, unit i would not go for a hash block here now, I'm also going to be chrono boosting my Nexus a decent amount. As you can imagine, with this challenge, you do have to, you know, get up to a big economy because one or two DTs really not going to make the difference. It's very rare that your opponent does not make any spore crawlers. In fact, this is the, the thing for Zerg in general. If you play TVZ, I always think Banshees are not usually the best unit to build. Like, they're very good defensively. They're great against Roaches, for example. They're great at keeping map control later on. But Zergs always make blind spores. I think it's been like that for a lot of years now. As long as I can remember, really, Zergs just make a blind spore as part of their build. Even if you don't make anything they need a spore for, they will still make one. And in ZVP, I feel like almost all the builds start with Oracle. So they also make spore if they don't get any scouting off. So I don't think you're really going to win by, uh, you know, rushing DTs like crazy and not have any economy to back it up. Now, this Adept really is just a bait. I'm not planning to do anything with this Adept in his base at all. I really just, you know, being a little annoying and that's about it. Now here, I, I didn't expect that he had speed already. So he's probably going to kill it unless I get good target fire. It's really funny that I got like the worst target fire possible here, as I said it. But somehow this Adept escaped, but I don't think that he saw. I didn't intend to shade it there, but I did. So now it's alive. And this is exactly what i meant i am taking a third nexus 
of, of I believe two stalkers and one 4 HP adept in my opponent's base. This build actually has potential, by the way. If you're not just making DTs and you're actually planning on making other units, I think this build has potential. Because if your Zerg opponent sees that you're doing this, a very logical response would be to make a ton of roaches and attack you, right? Before making a lair. But with DTs, you can just defend that easily and then you have three bases. So I feel like there's definitely some scenarios. Like if you play against a Zerg you know is cheesy or maybe against a Zerg you know will pull the trigger when he sees this. This is already quite nice, by the way. Then this could be a pretty cool build. Now this game, I decided to go for Shadow Stride really fast, which means I think he probably could have killed that, by the way, if he tried. I'm, I'm not 100% convinced, but I think he could have killed it. But I'm going to go for Shadow Stride really fast, which is DT Blink. And I'm mostly doing that for outplays. I don't think... You know, oh my god, this adept is actually doing stuff. I wasn't even... Yeah, there we go. I was. I forgot about this adept's existence, to be honest. And then I looked at it and it suddenly... I think it might have killed two drones or maybe just one. Uh, but yeah, against Zerg, you don't really want to blink on top of the army with DTs. Against Terran, this was a very popular strategy for a while. But against Zerg, especially with Bailings, you don't really want to do that. But you can blink in between the bases, high ground, low ground, or blink onto a hatchery, stuff like that. And here I have amassed an army of 60 Ts. Now, I could have gone a little bit faster. Uh, but the thing is, right, that I he already saw that I had the Ts because I defended his Zerglings with it. Now, here I have a battery, so this is not going to do any damage to me. Sadly, I did have to pull my Dark Templars back, though. Now, I do think the forge here is very important. DTs, they are a combat unit, but still, you're not going to be able to survive without a lot of cannons, right? So I'm going to put a lot of cannons down everywhere, take a lot of bases. Notice how I'm taking my fourth base already. I do have to say, this is a strategy that I find really cool. Here, if he's not paying attention, I could get the spore. I don't think it's wise to go for that because the queen's already there. If I got the spore, I could win the game. But keep in mind, I also don't know what the timing of the lair is. Now, this amount of DTs would one-shot uh, a queen. Okay, so there's an Overseer morphing. But I do have Blink already, right? So there you go. That's where it's useful. I used it to escape, not to Blink in. And I kept my six DTs alive. I am already going up to four bases. And to be honest, I would say that I... I was going to say I like the situation, but that is all relative. Because here, I don't feel like we're realistically in a good spot. I haven't done any damage with the DTs. I think I maybe killed like 10 Zerglings, and that's about it. And my opponent knows I have mass DTs. And he could decide to go for Mutas at any point. Now, there's one mind game advantage I believe I have here. And that is that my opponent doesn't know that I'm only going to make DTs and nothing else, right? So, for example, he could go Mutas right now and it would be absolutely terrifying. But he might delay that choice by a little bit because I could make Archons, right? Like, I have 10 DTs. If I have more four Ar or, or five Archons, the Mutas are not going to be very happy at all. Here we're going to be able to cancel that base, which is really nice. Now I'm going to try to get the other base as well. Keep in mind, I do have Blink. So I can probably escape as the Overseer does not have speed. Now I'm going to go for that hatchery. I'm going to get it. He actually turned it into a lair and we escaped with two DTs as well. And just like that, we've effectively cut, effectively cut his economy in half. Now there's still the problem that I'm only making Dark Templars, right? I think a main idea or concept of this challenge is that you have to counterattack at all times. It's kind of like, imagine if you were playing mass Zerglings against Terran. Terran is going to be doing brutal pushes at your front door with Widow Mines, a lot of bio. And Zerglings are not going to be that good in a head-on fight, but you can run past, run into his base, make him split his units, and that way get a really you know, efficient set of trades going. And that's pretty much what I want to do here. As soon as he attacks me, the best choice is usually to go across and just kill his base instead. Now here I'm going to try to take a fifth nexus. That's a lot. Oh my god, that was a lot of Zerglings dead. I'm going to take a fifth nexus here. I don't really care that much about the location because I want to create chaos. If he wants to send his entire army there to kill it, I'm, I'm not going to be upset about it. I'll just maybe kill his base instead. I do need to keep in mind I used my recall already. Right? Recall is a very, very useful tool. I, I used it to save 40 Ts earlier. Uh, and if I get caught now, I would lose 10 Ts and probably the game. Now, I made a robo there. The reason why I made a robo, keep in mind, I'm allowed to make an observer for detection because I'm Protoss and I don't have scans. Uh, <laughs> that's kind of funny. It almost sounds like I'm complaining if I put it that way. Um, but very often what I notice is that Zergs go for Lurkers. Like, a surprising amount of time. I really didn't know Lurkers were that popular against Protoss. But whenever I do these Protoss challenges, it didn't matter if I was playing DTs only or... Let's say High Templars only. There's Mutalisk as well. Very often they would just go for Lurkers. And I think you can imagine what happens if you have Mass DTs against a million Lurkers. Now there's Mutas going on already. This is a very good moment for me because he's probably going to come back for this exactly. This is great. And now I can create Chaos. And perhaps more importantly, 
I can... Oh, this is going to be very expensive, I have to say. But I'm probably going to kill that lair if I don't get the lair. DTs are not as good as I thought they were exactly. Killed it pretty comfortably. But now I'm going to be able to buy time and actually get cannons up everywhere. You can see that my... It's really funny. My fifth base is the most defended base right now. Like, the fifth base is looking pretty good. There's a lot of batteries and cannons there. But my natural, for example, is not, not quite as safe. And now, I mean, I killed a lot of his economy. He does not have a lair. He lost his new base. He lost his main base. His, his eco sucks. But I, I don't have units right now, guys. I have... I think it's two Stalkers and... I th and yeah, I'm pretty sure I have two Stalkers and 60 Ts. That's my entire army. I don't have 106 supply, but that is pretty much all probes. So here we go with the DT squad again. There's a lot of mutas in my base. And keep in mind, I'm not allowed to make any more units to kill that. Well, technically, according to the rule, I believe I'm allowed to make two more Stalkers. Because I only made two Stalkers and one Adept. But I feel like at this point, I'm so into the challenge that I'm not even thinking about making more Stalkers here. Now, I... Oh, that is a beautiful moment. I jumped on top of his queen, so he got distracted. And he lost a couple of mutas there to the cannons. That is exactly what I need to happen. Now I'm going to kill a lot more drones here. This is where the outplays come into play. Here we go. DT, DT Blink is actually more ranged than I thought it was, by the way. But you can tell the amount of chaos I'm creating. I even killed some mutas here. I'm going to blink past this army so I can sneak back into the third base and the fifth base at the same time. I only have six gates. There go my final few stalkers, by the way. I only have six gates, but because DTs are so freaking expensive, you can actually make an infinite amount. Now, that blink I thought was really cool. I don't think he would really be paying attention to that. Like, I blinked past into his main base, and that's going to create so much chaos once again. Notice how all the roaches are walking back. That base goes down. That base that I looked at at the fifth is not even there anymore. Now he's going to be losing more drones. I think at this point, I should probably be trying to get a sixth base as well. Now, this is something that's really nice. I, I was trying to hide this one DT. Oh my god, that actually got through. Dude, these blink out plays are so freaking cool. I have to say, this is one of the coolest things about the challenge so far. Blinking past his army. I'm able to create so much chaos. And now, I have the one legendary DT that's just standing over the ledge waiting to strike in his natural. And it is really funny that I'm able to create so much chaos despite not really having units it's just like they're invisible they one shot workers and they kill buildings very fast so it just creates like a massive panic reaction here it's just one dt that i left behind it's gonna go back into the main base and well he did defend that one it would have been nice if i had enough dts to blink on top of those roaches but i didn't so at this point i think i have 11 dts my opponent has i want to say roughly 10 mutas and maybe about 15 to 20 roaches so the armies are relatively close I mean, obviously, his army is still better, but they're relatively close. I mean, this is my sixth base I'm taking, guys. I'm taking my sixth base. He's rebuilding his fourth right now. Probably about to get a ton more drones here. I'm going to go for the hatchery. I, I think this kind of trade is a really good decision because Zerg, I mean, if, if I let him drone up, it's going to get completely out of hand, right? Like, he'll have 90 drones before I know it. I'm not exaggerating. I've played it before. I've played against it, and I've played as a Zerg, and it's just, it's, it's tough, okay? At some point, you leave them alone for two minutes, they go back 90 drones, and then all of a sudden, they max on roaches, and you're wondering how you're ever supposed to kill mass roaches with only DTs, right? Now, I'm already going up to my seventh base, so that's obviously looking pretty good. Still only on six gateways though i feel like i need like 14 gas i've never said the number before i think but i think i need like 14 gases to be able to afford dts like this because it's just it's so much like even now with all these bases i have i can't afford non-stop dt production now i'm gonna have a bunch of dts and what my plan here is is to blink on top of the roaches because what he did is he just parked his roaches at his third base but now i have enough dts to actually blink on top so here we go i'm gonna blink on top and these dts are so freaking strong look at those roaches getting annihilated there's barely any roaches left and that gives opportunity for my dts on the right side to strike notice how i'm doing my best to split these dts up already for maximum chaos that base is gonna die I could consider going for that hive, but I think it's probably smarter if I just split these up and create more chaos. I mean, he still has the bases up, but there's... I don't think he has that many drones left, to be honest. All he pretty much has is the mutas. Keep in mind, he lost the roaches as well. The drones there are gone. The drones in the main are going to die as well. The roaches at the third base are going to die. And I feel like despite me casting, I really doubt anyone can keep up with with what is going on right now. I'm not going to blame you guys because this is just crazy. These are everywhere. The Zerg calls you G and he just has absolutely nothing left. 13 minutes and about 34 seconds of mass DTs. He has 94 supply left. 33 drones against 112 and mass DTs gets the job done. Unit number seven is going to be Phoenixes only. The opponent is a 5,000 plus MMR Protoss player 
And this game is one of the miracles of the episode because I, I mean, if you guys think about it, right? Beating a Protoss player with only Phoenixes besides the couple games we used to make early on, how exactly is that gonna happen? You can always imagine getting a little bit ahead, right? It's the same against Terran. Like if you play against a Terran, something that I imagined beforehand was that perhaps uh, the Terran goes for an early 1-1-1 push, Marine Cyclones, Vikings, doesn't realize I have five Phoenixes banked up, walks into my shield battery, I kill all of his units, and then we can keep, you know, being ahead. But against Protoss, first of all, you're never going to have as many Phoenixes as Stalkers, I believe, and then they can make units like Archons, which you can't even lift, by the way. In case some of you guys are curious what's going to happen later on, you cannot actually lift Archons, so just imagine what the hell I'm going to do against it, maybe build cannons or something. But anyway, I really did think that this game was going to be against Terran, against Zerg. Phoenixes make for a really good opener, but the thing is, once Zerg gets those amazing spellcasters that they have, Vipers and Investors, then what on earth are you going to do with Phoenixes? Like a fungal and a parasitic bomb, and all your Phoenixes are crying, and they'll never leave the base again. So I really thought this was going to be against Terran, but yet here we are, and this game is going to be an absolutely amazing one. Now, the strategy that I had in mind was to go for... Phoenix is early on enough, so if... Like, PvP is a very cheesy matchup, right? So imagine my Protoss opponent goes for some kind of an attack here, tries to attack me with 3 or 4-gate Stalker. I wanted to have enough Phoenixes to smash the attack on the first try, and then be able to make phoenixes later on and try to keep the momentum so here you can see i was waiting for the probe to leave so i could make that stargate didn't want to show it to him i'm building warp gate but all that is obviously a fake now this what i saw right here is already quite scary because there are stalkers on the way to my base i have a couple of adepts but i don't have any stalkers surprisingly my opponent did let this pylon finish now what i what is good for me here is that i haven't expanded yet and i'm not necessarily planning to expand right away as you can see i'm looking at my potential battery placement but two stalkers do be two adept so i need to be very very careful that i was afraid that an oracle might finish and here we go proto's opponent has shown up but in the end i would say this is a pretty decent exchange for me uh, you know my opponent lost a pylon there which probably delayed his expansion as well and that's going to be phoenix number one building Making a couple more gateway units as mostly just for the fake if he would shade up. Doesn't think I don't I didn't think here that he had any adept, so I just cancel one of the gateway units and that's gonna leave me at five. Now this is gonna be quite a dance because the Phoenixes, one thing that's really important about them is that they basically disable the unit like an interference matrix, if you think about it, right? So they can be incredibly useful if you use them in the right moments. If you use it a little bit too early, that's problematic. But here, check this out. I'm gonna target a low HP stalker with the stalkers and I have and lift one of the full HP ones, and just like that, I'm gonna kill one stalker for free and the rest had to turn around i have my adepts on his side of the map to scout but now i did accidentally finish the warp gate here by the way it was it was supposed to be a fake of course but because i was so busy doing stuff i didn't cancel it and this is what i was talking about guys another uh, a stalker is gonna fall here that stalker's low hp is gonna die to the adepts and now i wouldn't say we have found you know the victory that we needed but we are gonna be slightly ahead compared to where we normally would be that's the that's the most accurate way i can put it because my opponent obviously expanded faster than us or he's already going up to, you know, three or four eight blink stalker. Looks like he expanded and it's just going to be two gateways. This is actually a pretty cool move that you can do with if you have adepts, by the way. You can lift. I should probably explain the mechanic real quick. So you always keep a probe in the wall. So you can build a pylon in the wall when adept shade in. But what you can do with phoenixes is lift that probe and then shade the adepts in so they can't wall it off. And then you can kill, uh, you know, the probes in the main base. Though at this point, realistically... One of my adepts is red HP. I'm not allowed to make any more of them. Don't forget that. So do I really want to sacrifice them? And besides that, my opponent has enough stalkers. And I don't even know when Blink is going to finish, but it's going to be pretty soon. Now, there is a battery. Luckily for me, Phoenixes are absolute probe slaying demons. So the battery is not going to do that much. And this is, yeah, this is the scariest part of the game. I mean, look at what's happening here, right? I have a bunch of Phoenixes without energy. My opponent probably has a million stalkers. And with a million, I mean about 10. Uh, with Blink, and how on earth am I going to defend that? So I'm going to bring my Phoenixes back. Notice how I'm not really focused on creating probes with Chrono Boost, or at all. As you can see right now, I'm really just focused on uh, Chrono Boosting more Phoenixes, because I do need to snowball. 
Here we go. I don't have enough energy for a battery overcharge, but my Phoenixes did come back but in time. That battery is healing so much, by the way. It's doing an amazing job. And now I get a couple more Phoenixes finishing. I'm going to be able to lift those stalkers. And even though I lost the probes, which is bad for me, this goes towards my objective of getting enough Phoenixes out to snowball the game forever, right? Like, if you... Let's say I kill all of the stalkers at some point and I have 10 Phoenix left. He is not going to be able to warp stalkers because I'll just kill them. So, I mean, we haven't reached that point yet, but it's starting to look a little better here. Now, if I didn't get that warp gate on accident, I would have been able to make plus one, I think. Or, well, judging by it, I probably would have just, you know, not be supply blocked or uh, resource blocked, I guess I should say, on this Phoenix over here. So, never mind. That plus one would be very, very nice. Now, if you look at my gateway setup, it looks really tragic. Like, I'm being kind of risky here by moving out with these phoenixes. Like, imagine if he would blink into my base with 10 stalkers, then <laughs> what the hell are my, you know, red HP adept, my green HP adept, and my two stalkers going to do about it? Maybe uh, going for a forge at some point would be a good idea. I'm definitely going to get it later. So my opponent has four gateways. He doesn't have a third. This is a good strategy against what I'm doing, but at the same time, it's a little unusual. And there is the building that we're all going to be scared of, guys. The Templar Archive is building. Feedback is also pretty good against Phoenixes, but feedbacking is a little risky because then I might, you know, lift the High Templars up and kill them before they morph into Archons. But an Archon cannot be lifted. If you think about it right now, guys, I would basically die to one Archon. I mean... The shield batteries plus, you know, my four semi-low HP gateway units are probably win, but two Archons would actually kill me. So now he's going to blink forward. I'm going to try to do some damage here. I'm going to get one Stalker and I'm going to lose one Phoenix for it. Looks like a second Phoenix, but I did bait the blink forward and now I'm going to be able to kill a couple more Stalkers. Keep in mind, I want to prevent him from getting too many Stalkers. So even though this trade is not exactly what I want... It is decent because I yeah, I really don't want him to snowball. Like, if I get attacked by two Archers and 20 Stalkers, I think even if I have 30 Phoenixes, I might be in trouble. So I think at the end, that was a good trade. In particular, because he blinked onto the low ground and he lost two extra Stalkers. If that wasn't the case, maybe I wouldn't have liked it. But here, I think it's okay. And now we're going to start building cannons. The strategy, I really, this game makes me love this challenge so much because the strategy in this challenge, it's really just focused on mind games and letting your opponent make mistakes like my opponent here let's be honest some of you are thinking it right if he realized what the challenge was and that i would never be able to make or never be allowed to make carriers or something which would be the normal transition he could just play a macro game make a bunch of archons and at some point he would just win right but here what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep trying to kill his probes and then I'm going to make as many cannons as possible so when he does the most likely desperate all-in after losing his probes, I can barely defend it with the cannons and win the game. So the cannons are not going to be that good against the stalkers, but they are really good against archons. Archons in particular are really good against biological units such as zealots and adepts, but uh, they're not that good against cannons. The stalkers, however, could probably one-shot my cannons, so that's why I need to be really, really, really good at keeping my phoenixes around, right? I need to kill his probes, but I also need to make sure that my phoenixes are at home when the stalkers attack. Now, Protoss does have a tool that I've, uh, you know, enjoyed using a lot as a Protoss player, and that is that I can recall these phoenixes at any time. Notice I'm also making cannons in my main base. Like, this is really the entire strategy, guys. I'm hoping uh, that I can defend this, and here we go. Now it's probably time for a recall. Uh, let's see if I can bunch those up. There we go. The recall is commenced. I did lose a couple of probes, but besides... I mean, losing the probes is not that big of a deal, but here we go, guys. It's three Archons. How on earth am I going to defend that? I do have a couple more cannons. If I can bait him in, and there we go. I'm not sure if he realized that I recalled my phoenix is so he blinked forward to snipe the cannons but the phoenix recall is going to be massive he's going to lose so many stalkers there and like i said the archons themselves are not that good against the cannons so one archon has already fallen i do need to run away here because i am out of energy that is the big weak point of the phoenix of course if i don't have energy i can't live the two archons themselves right now are not that big of a trouble because I have my two Stalkers alive still. Keep in mind, I'm not allowed to rebuild those. But I can't send my Stalkers in because of his Stalkers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull probes. I'm going to split the Phoenix a little bit so the Archons don't do that much splash damage. That's the biggest danger of the Archons. And we have killed every single Stalker. The, the Archons are still alive. I'm going to lose one of my Adepts. It looks like I really want to kill that one Archon. There we go. Killing every single Archon is a really big deal. Sadly, there is three more Archons on the way. I don't have that many Phoenix left. Maybe I could kill that one Archon. That'd be so nice. Uh, I think I have uh, three cannons, right? Oh, I have 
actually five cannons, but a couple of them are below the base. It looks like he will be able to snipe this Nexus. I mean, if I was allowed to warp two more Stalkers here, this would be so much better for me, but sadly I can't. And the probes just die instantly to the splash damage of the Archons. I'm really trying my best to deal with this. Actually, pretty good probes around there. It's going to help me kill one of those Archons, but now I'm going to be back to killing his probes. Like, keep in mind, if he just warps in Archons, uh, I even cancel that cannon. Not quite sure if I like that move, but if he just keeps building Archons that I can't really, you know, go out and kill them, but I can kill his probes forever. Like, he has three bases full of probes. This game is so funny. He has three bases with probes, but I have, I think it's 20 Phoenixes or so. I think I have 23 Phoenixes right now, so I can just keep killing his probes forever through the Archons. Right now, his economy was actually better than mine because I'm not mining at all from my natural, obviously, maybe a couple long distance. Yeah, a couple long distance probes here. But besides that, I just have eight probes in my main, but I'm pretty sure I just killed pretty much every single probe that he has. And now, after we're building the Nexus, okay, so that, that's a good idea. I said I didn't like the fact that I canceled the cannon, but now I'm going to rebuild it after getting that Nexus back up. That's actually a pretty good idea. Mark of the past is smarter than Mark of the present. Or for you, this is also Mark of the past, I guess. But you guys know what I mean. Look at his Phoenix count, by the way. Like, it's so many Phoenixes, I don't think I ever need to make another one. Like, I really just need to keep killing his probes and wait for him to get desperate and attack me again and try to hold it with the cannons. I, I don't think he has the money to make anything, by the way. I really doubt he can make anything whatsoever. He's trying to mine gas so he can get more Archons. I think I might have killed his final probe there, actually. Okay, but why did he send the probe there? That's like, I mean, it sounds really silly, but that was one fourth of his entire economy. I can't believe that he sent that probe there. I mean, realistically, it was a probe that made a proxy pylon earlier. Now, there could always be a hidden expansion. So notice how I send the Phoenix out to the right side to scout for that and also to the left side. There's another probe there, which is insane. Like, he actually had 40% of his economy. Two out of five probes that he had at the end were out on the map. And I think it's mostly, I mean, he, he knows I'm on one base. Well, at this point, he scouts that I have an expansion, but he knew I was on one base. And I think he wanted to confirm whether I rebuild the natural or not. And I think right now should be around the time where we can expect a desperate attack. Oh, there's an Eye Templar there that I'm going to be able to kill. That's what I was talking about. The Eye Templar goes down. I don't think he has a single... Does he have a single probe? He has one more probe there. That might be the final one. There we go. And he just leaves zero probes left against the Phoenix play. And we just beat a Grandmaster Protoss with Stalkers and Arcos with just Phoenixes. Unit number eight is going to be the Tempest, and this is going to be one of my absolute favorite strategies. As you guys know, I like to do, I send out my probe instantly to start harass the Terran, and this map, guys, this map has a gold base. Now, I'm going to have to be completely honest here. The strategy that I'm going to do in this game is going to look pretty strong. It really is going to look pretty strong, and the best part about this is, is that I am doing this strategy by accident, basically. A couple games ago, before I played this game, I played against a Terran uh, on this map. I, I was in the other positions, but it was this map. And it's really funny because what happened was I built my pylon too close to my natural. So I couldn't put down my Nexus, which is one of the biggest mistakes a Protoss player can make. It's an absolute classic mistake as well. So I was kind of forced to take the gold base. And in that game, my build was just not that great because it was all an accident. But then I realized, wait... This strategy, if I did it on purpose, would be absolutely freaking insane. So here we are, guys. It is time to take the gold base. Now, so far, this probe uh, has just scouted that my opponent is going to go for a double gas. Nothing special. Of course, double gas, completely normal. And what's so good about this gold base mission? Because there's two gold bases on this map, right? You also have the one on the bottom, right? But this one, guys, it is a lot closer to the opponent's main base. So you can imagine where I'm going with this, probably. I'm going to start making Tempest from this gold base and get really, really close to his main. And he's not really going to be able to break it because I'll be able to make batteries down there. I have a whole base down there. Bonus point if my opponent scout my natural and thinks there's absolutely nothing there because obviously I am expanding. I'm expanding uh, even more than a normal expansion, you could say, because I am taking a valuable gold base. And here we go. The Stargate's going to come down. If there is one strategy in this entire freaking video that you guys are going to copy, it should be this one. Like, this is freaking awesome. Now, keep in mind here... Um, I did scout that my opponent went for a Marine first. Marine first usually means some terrors are very tricky, including myself, obviously. Uh, but some terrors are very tricky and they'll make a Reaper after the Marine. But most terrors are not going to do that. So when you see a Marine first, you don't have to defend the main base. Maybe otherwise I would have kept the Adept at home or I would have made a battery in my main base, for example. But because it's a Marine first, I don't really have to worry. So now this is getting a little scary. My opponent going for a Reactor Factory, which could mean that he's going to go for really fast 
uh, Hellions, for example, and I don't have that many defense. Now, here we go. I, I keep saying it so many times that I freaking love it. One of my absolute favorite Protoss tools is the recall. Just going to recall all my pros today. Gold days are not all of them. And now I'm going to have a really good economy. Way better than I would even normally have, which sounds crazy for someone who hasn't taken his natural, right? Here, I'm going to saturate that gas. And then I'm going to start with... It's really funny how I'm just kind of placing things everywhere. Like, there's not that much space. There's not that many pilots I have. So I need to be very good with using my space. So the fleet beacon is going to... Like, imagine scouting my natural with a Hellion drop, right? And you just see a fleet beacon there. There's no Nexus. There's just a fleet beacon chilling there. And here we go. Stargate number two. We still haven't been scouted. I've been keeping my Adept in the wall. Now, there's definitely potential for this game to go into absolute chaos. The reactor factory usually means a hellion drop can also mean with a mine drop uh or i guess a non hell a non-drop hellion attack and there we go it is in fact a widow mine drop uh, and it's really funny he's gonna go for my natural but obviously there's nothing there you can tell by the little laser on the widow mines that he does have an armory as well so these are going to be invisible I'm going to be able to kill a couple of these, but there are going to be two permanently invisible widow mines in my mineral line. And now, the reason why my opponent was distracted, I can tell you guys, is pretty obvious. He noticed I don't have a natural. He is absolutely terrified right now. Now, keep in mind, um, making detection here is allowed, but I felt like making an oracle was a little bit too much. Like, an oracle is just such a such a good unit that has so many purposes, so I didn't want to do that. And I also don't want to afford a robo right now, so instead of that, I'm just going to go for the forge. Here we go. I split my probes. Really good timing, actually. I didn't even really look at the clock there, I believe, but I remember the timing of when the widow mines were going to shoot, and I was able to dodge that quite nicely. And this is the biggest part of the plan. This is the build, the strategy that I want you guys to use. I'm going to make batteries outside of my opponent's base. This, this by the way, this game is from before the patch, but after after the patch, the strategy is going to be even better. Like, after the patch, when the Tempest are more microable, this strategy is going to be so freaking good. And now, I mean, these Tempest, I don't know how they're ever going to die, to be honest. Like, there's going to be batteries out there. I mean, knowing myself, I might be a little goofy and fly them into Widow Mines at some point, and that could be uh, one of the only ways to lose this. But I have two Stargates making Tempest. I have a gold base that my opponent is not aware of. Uh, like, my economy is better than his, but he can't move out of his base. Like, it's such a crazy situation. Here we go. I'm gonna get the medevac with that super, super long anti-air range. And even the cyclone, guys. Cyclones die pretty fast to Tempest. Only three shots. Tempests are known to not have that much DPS. Uh, because they shoot slow. But the damage is very, very high. Now, I got dropped into my main base. At this point, my opponent might be tempted to think, like, okay, my opponent has zero economy. All I gotta do is kill these three Tempests and I'll win. But I have a fully functional, saturated gold base. And if we were gonna take another base next to it, that base I have right there, at this point, honestly, it's just a distraction. I still have a bunch of Tempests. I have a bunch of money. I think I got five. No, I got four Tempests right now with maybe one more on the way. And this is just such a like oppressive way or oppressive unit to deal with right like he doesn't have enough units he does have a couple of the widomites are gonna be good there we go we're gonna kill another one with the eternal range yes turrets but what on earth are you gonna do against the tempest with such long range against the turret even the turret's gonna burn down i could have probably gone for the tempest upgrade but decided it wasn't worth it now my opponent does have stim here we go i'm gonna target the cyclones the units that really deal damage i'm gonna lose one tempest for that but keep in mind guys if i make sure he can't stack up stuff like cyclones and vikings there's not much he's gonna be able to do i mean i have batteries here here oh, i'm flying very close to the widow mine here i'm kind of scaring myself watching my game back but that's pretty scary but i'm gonna get more and more tempest my economy is still looking good and my opponent for now his economy is matching but at some point his main base is gonna mine out as well he could try to drop me but Tempests are so good against air that dropping is always scary. And every time he on Burrows, we're just going to be able to one-shot the Widow Mines. I think I noticed there was another one there, right? I feel like there's another Widow Mine here. Is he going to shoot up my Tempest? I, I I don't see it right now, but I feel like it's... Oh, there it is on the right side. No, my poor Tempest got a blast. I had a feeling there was another one, but I didn't see it. Now, at this point, I haven't seen the Marines and Medivax for a while. So I think he might be dropping me or maybe I snipe the medevac or something. But in any case, I can just start making cannons and batteries at home and there's nothing to worry about. He's going to repair uh, his buildings because he doesn't want to die. He's killing my quote-unquote only base, right, guys? Well, actually, Rico is going to be off cooldown, I believe. I could, well, I don't have energy because I use Chrono Boost. That, that would have been a very cool play if I could recall these probes. But these Tempest, like with the range and the DPS, he will never get a unit out again. 
Like, he can't get units out against this. Like, the only way you beat the Tempest is by overwhelming them. But every time a unit finishes, it just dies instantly. There's another one there. I, I have almost as many Tempests as Marines. I think it's six Tempests against eight or nine Marines here. He does have combat shield and good upgrades. And these are not the micro ones yet. But there we go. And this, it's not technically the cheese category. Because I did expand a lot. But this is a disgusting proxy Tempest build. Unit number nine is going to be the carrier. The opponent is a 5,000 MMR Grandmaster Protoss. And to be honest, I thought... It's really funny. I feel like I keep saying that. I thought this unit was only going to work against Zerg and maybe against Terran if I did some kind of weird cheese. But here we are playing against the Protoss. We're playing on Dragon Scales, which I do think is a bit of a better map for it. So what I thought was important here is that when we play against Protoss, we need a map that has a ramp in the natural. If you have a ramp in the natural, just to explain the meta of PvP a little bit, if there's a ramp in the natural, it's very common to one gate expand, and it's not seen as greedy. If, I mean, just imagine, if I open with two gateways and I take a natural very late, how am I ever going to get enough gas to go for carriers, right? It's not going to happen. So I need to one gate expand. But if I would have played on a map without a ramp on the natural, then we probably just get attacked on die here. I also was pretty sure we were going to get attacked because our opponent is going for 2k. So you see his probe already posturing on the low ground, maybe taking an expansion. I mean, right now he's faking it because he doesn't have the amount of money yet. If he does have the money, that would mean that he skipped his cybernetic core to expand, which would be a very questionable decision to say the least. But right, we're allowed to make 5 gateway units just like in the past couple games. I think that is most likely going to be either an Adept and 4 Stalkers or 5 Stalkers. Those are going to be the best defensive units, of course. Here I cancel the pylon because he has a zealot. Zealot is what you want to do if you want to make sure to expand. Like, even if you're playing 2-gate, you, do, you don't want to make a zealot. It's 100 minerals. It's a unit that's not that good. A zealot gets absolutely obliterated by both an adept and the stalker. So, you, oh, exactly. There is the nexus. Uh, so, you only want to do that if you want to cancel the pylon. And there you go. Oh, no. Actually, he didn't go for a 2-gate. He went for a reactive 1-gate expand. I have to say, that's very cool, to be honest. So what he did is he had the position to go for a two gate. He scouted me early on. I didn't even, I don't even remember seeing this during the game, by the way. I just noticed it now. But what he did was he checked, he scouted very early. And when he saw I was one gate expanding on the low ground, he made a cybernetic score instead of a second gateway, effectively turning it into a one gate expand. Which means I'm now ahead because I did manage to pylon block his base and he didn't pylon block mine. Uh, so my nexus is just a lot faster. And here we go. I don't have to keep that pylon because like I said, adepts absolutely obliterate uh, zealots. Like it, zealot is light, so an adept is double damage. Look how fast it dies. Adepts are also faster. I should be embarrassed that I got hit there. Nah, no, just kidding. So here's the Stargate. And this is when it gets interesting. Stargate after one gate expand is the most common tech to do in PvP. You can go for an Oracle. Here you can see, obviously, this is going to be a fake Oracle. I'm going to cancel that, though. So far in this challenge, I have failed to cancel a couple things. There, I accidentally shot my own Stargate, I believe. So that's going to cost me a little bit of damage on the Stalker, but that's okay. And now, as soon as I look back, I'll be able to cancel the Oracle. And it is time for a Fleet Beacon. There we go. An absolutely absurd build. But why this is so interesting is because Oracle is very standard. But this is a one gate expand against one gate expand, meaning that my opponent's probably also going to go for a Stargate. Yeah, I know there's just some kind of like deep lore stuff, like deep meta of PvP. But that makes it more likely that it's going to turn into Phoenix against Phoenix. Phoenix against Phoenix is one of the most problematic things about the PvP matchup because you can't really escape it. Once you're trapped, you can't transition, else your opponent has more Phoenixes than you. will just destroy your Phoenixes and torture you for the rest of the game and you're dead. So you have to keep making Phoenixes. So here, if my opponent went for a Stargate, it's very likely that he's now saving Phoenixes. And then I'm going to do one of the most surprising things ever for him, and that's make a carrier instead of Phoenixes or Oracles or Blink on my own. Now, my dad is going to get in. It's going to give me a really good scout. And there we go. We do confirm the Phoenixes. It was either going to be that or Blink. So now I'm going to make a Forge to make cannons. And what I thought was so cool about this is that my strategy might somehow be good against his. Because think about this for a second, right? The thing with Phoenixes is Phoenixes shoot while moving. They are light, so they do uh, double damage to each other, and they're very fast. If you ever get caught with one less Phoenix on the other side of the map, you are going to lose all of your Phoenixes, which means if you're playing Stargate against Stargate, moving out is super, super scary. I do not have a single Phoenix. I even canceled Oracle. He probably thinks there's an Oracle on the map still, which I don't have, but I'm going for carriers. If he's going to play too passive and he doesn't attack me, like so far, he still hasn't scouted. I already have a freaking carrier out. I'm even going to go send a probe to take a third base. If he doesn't realize this soon, 
he's gonna end up having 10 phoenixes against a guy that only has carriers and phoenixes they're okay ish against carriers but not really great so that could turn out quite well for me so now he's gonna get the scout on the carrier if you're wondering here by the way why i attacked with the carrier it's because in the stargate you can actually see the animation of what's building so as soon as he saw the stargate he could already see that there was a carrier being built there uh, that's actually an omega tip by the way if you didn't know that like that's huge like you can scout someone's stargate and literally see if they're building an oracle or phoenix a tempest or a carrier so keep that in mind now I already got two carriers. I'm getting my third base. This is always a very weird matchup playing against Phoenixes because Phoenixes kill everything besides building. So you can just... You can technically start taking bases everywhere and build cannons everywhere. Now, he's going to try to target one of those, but I have a battery. We might be able to get a Phoenix. Doesn't look like it. Now, this is where the micro portion comes in play from him. So Phoenixes are really good against the interceptors, but not against the carrier itself. So if he micros perfectly... He can bait the interceptors out, keep micro back and forth, and then kill the interceptors. And, you know, at some point the carrier is going to run out and then you can kill the carrier. The problem for him is that I'm already going to have plus one. I already have three carriers about to pop out in 10 seconds. And now I'm making two target carrier. I got a third base up. I wouldn't even be surprised if he doesn't have a third base. Now, obviously, I need to be very, very careful here. Always having a battery near is super important. The battery, this is actually kind of funny. Normally, you want a lot of batteries right now. I just want one Nair because with one overcharged battery, he will not be able to kill a single carrier. Like, overcharged batteries are just crazy. So, as long as I have one battery, notice how I put a few different ones in different locations. Uh, it's going to be able to keep my carriers alive. Now, here, we might be able to get a couple Phoenix. Let's see if we get one, two, three, and that is massive. Phoenixes are such a snowball momentum unit. Like, you think about it this way, right? He killed a couple of my probes, but I killed three of his Phoenixes. And, I mean, I'm only going to make carriers. Carriers have a really hard counter in this game, which is the Tempest. So if this game goes really long, he's undoubtedly going to win by making Tempest. Now, he's going to attack again. But I mean, once again, guys, I have that battery. He tries to die, but I'm just going to heal that up. I think he lost another, I want to guess, two Phoenixes or so. I'm going to have five carriers with plus one. And this is when I was really, really shocked. He has been making quote-unquote normal units. He has a couple Stalkers in Immortal and a Sentry. I have no idea why the immortals there i know i have four stalkers but i i cannot think of an oh, oh, you know of anything but the stalkers mean he's gonna go for blink but both blink and phoenixes are very snowballing momentum units and he's not gonna have that many because he's going for both he's neither gonna have a ton of phoenixes or a ton of blink stalkers and i have an absolutely killer five carriers here guys look at this this is gonna be some proper dps out here he might even have to activate that now i did get my interceptors back i don't want to lose the interceptors to the phoenix micro that i mentioned before and every time he's gonna get close i will just be targeting now he's targeting one carrier but look at the dps on these things guys the one carrier is still not dead i have plus one i think he doesn't have plus one all the stalkers are pretty much already gone he has two low hp stalkers warping in two more he might be making like a void ray or more phoenixes or something but everything is just gonna die to these carriers and this game seemed like an absolutely brutal counter to his strategy and his strategy wasn't even anything crazy well the immortal was of course but besides that he just played phoenix against stargate and he got absolutely brutally punished by a protoss player just making carriers Unit number 10 is going to be the Disruptor, one of the most difficult challenges in this entire episode. I actually thought initially it would be slightly easier than some of the other macro challenges, but at the end it ended up being extremely difficult. I wonder what you guys would have expected actually, that it's like somewhat doable or just absolutely impossible. So what happened in most of the games was really that I... You know, sometimes I would have amazing fights with Disruptors. I would blow up 80% of their army, but then the remaining 20% would just be a bunch of absolute demons just torturing my Disruptors, my Mineral Line, etc. Now, our opponent here, I think it's the same guy as we played against in the Sentries game. I'm not 100% sure, but I think it's the same player here. He's a 4 8 6 4 Grandmaster Terran, if I remember correctly. Now, you're going to start with an Engineering Bay block. I do think uh, that there were basically two options for the Disruptors to win. I thought we would never be able to beat a Zerg. Like, I just can't imagine killing every single Zergling, you know, with a bunch of Disruptors. Sounds like the Zerg would have to mess up very bad. I thought we definitely needed to play against either Terran or Protoss. And then we needed, like, a very specific game. I thought if we played against Protoss, oh, I'm going to kill an SUV here. That's always very painful. You know, it doesn't happen very frequently, but sometimes I expect the Terran player to just leave if I kill an SUV with a probe. Like, it's just so freaking devastating, man. But he's still here, and that's good. But I think winning with Disruptors takes a very specific kind of game. Usually where you're getting pushed, and you can defend with Disruptors, like maybe 
let's say a three ranks attack by a Terran or a Protoss attacking with a bunch of Blink Stalkers, you can just blow their entire army up, that kind of thing. Like, if you're going to play a really long game, it's going to be hard to see it happen. And now, notice how I'm making a Stalker. I think I talked about it a bunch of times in the video that I really freaking love my Adepts, especially in the Adepts portion of the video, of course. But the hair... Think about it, right? Disruptors do not shoot up. The Stalker is going to be my only anti-air. So it's probably the best if I only make Stalkers. Now, I'm still pretty tempted to make an Adept here because Adepts are fantastic at scouting. So are Sentries, by the way, with Hallucination. Absolutely fantastic at scouting, but I think Stalkers here are going to be a little smarter. I had a bunch of... Trust me, I played so many games Disruptors only. Like, it really... So many freaking games. Here, the Reaper is slippery again. It always happens, by the way. Like, they're so hard to catch. I think I'll probably still catch it with the other Stalkers, but fully worth it a reaper like it's you know i guess i'm equally devastated mentally as he was losing that sev right there but all right i had so many games with disruptors where i would just end up losing to like liberators or drops and stuff so i decided to just make five stalkers forget about the adepts and that's it also gonna make blind batteries this is because i'm not really allowed to make units first of all but also my opponent is going for a double gas so he's most likely to pressure me somewhat early there is going to be the robo of course i do think the builds always look very funny like if you make j just a tip for the protos players out there right if you just randomly make three batteries like this you're you're going to be pretty far behind like you can't usually afford this but these games i do usually have to go to the extreme because i i, I need to live to make disruptors right i need to live so here i'm just scouting everywhere seeing if i can find anything on the map probably gonna make a couple of extra gases here it is a pretty hard decision to go between let's say going for fast double robo disruptor or actually taking a third base a little bit faster like those things are not easy to decide in this challenge whatsoever and i'm just gonna go out with the stalkers not planning to kill him or anything it's more just trying to scare him off more than anything else really like i don't want him to just feel free and macro and then attack me when he's max or some stuff like that like i really want him to be scared maybe he can think this is a blink stalker attack or something and at the same time get a little scouting info now this is very scary i realized he was on one base i see a medevac here so we're gonna have to defend a pretty much one base all in with this now there's a cyclone so we're gonna have to do a little bit of micro there pulling that stalker back Cyclones. Oh, that's a good pickup for a second there. I thought I was going to kill that one for free. Now, here I made an observer. This observer is, remember, purely for detection. I don't want to scout with it, so then I'm just going to put it there. I made it because, to be honest, I thought I was going to get Cloak Widow Mind dropped, which obviously you need a little bit of detection for. Uh, but that is the reason why I just AFK'd it in a remote place in my base where it doesn't really have a lot of value because I'm not allowed to use it for scouting. It's just for detection. So, you know, if I ever need it, then it will be there waiting for me, I suppose. Now, I do have double robo making Disruptor. I do think on one hand this strategy is good for me because he's gonna attack me disruptors are incredibly good at delaying attacks at some point i might be able to chip away enough of tanks and that's it the other hand one base solid means he's probably gonna have either a lot of metafax or a lot of liberators fast and these five stalkers it's, it's not like I'm allowed to rebuild them, don't forget. These five stalkers are the last end there that I'm ever going to have. And there, I'm already going to lose one of those. So now I have four stalkers for the rest of the game. And you can imagine what happens if I run into, let's say, two or three liberators. It's going to be very, very unpleasant. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to move a little forward with my disruptor. This is usually how you want to play with disruptors anyway, by the way, regardless of the situation. You kind of want to go out on the map and make sure that you have enough uh, you know, if you have an, a big enough army with disruptors at the front, your opponent's always going to be scared to move forward. You can delay with shots, you can buy time to recharge the shots, etc. Now, what my opponent's doing here is a really good move, a liberator and a drop. This disruptor shot, however, is not paying attention. Oh my god, it is a complete strike. I don't know anything about bowling, but I'm just going to imagine that I would have gotten 500 points for that, because that was a beautiful strike there. Some bowling experts probably very, very upset with me right now. Now, I am going to lose one tank, or one disruptor, rather, but somehow it paid off because i got a disruptor hit on both the tanks which means i can now kill it with this sneaky disruptor that escaped from the back look at this here we go another double hit we killed eight marines already and now we're gonna kill two tanks today we killed one liberator but there's another liberator here and this position is gonna be very very difficult for me keep in mind i'm gonna keep repeating it i only have these four stalkers for the anti-air and the disruptors are gonna have to do all the other work i'm gonna kill my own battery here so i do have space 
to kill that Liberator. Let's see. Man, the Disruptor Nobles are so fast. I can't believe I still killed two Marines there. That's pretty crazy. Now I'm going to go forward. I'm going to try to kill that Liberator. The Disruptor Shuttle is going to kill the Marines or at least make sure that the Marines don't kill my Stalkers in time. There we go. One Liberator is dead. I still have the Disruptor from downtown here. I'm going to try to get a hit on the tank. Disruptors, by the way, they do outrange tanks like that. If you shoot it at the edge, the tank can't shoot, but the Disruptor will hit with the splash. There we go. Going to kill that tank once again. And this is exactly what you need to do. You need to keep killing the tanks with the Disruptor Shots. And this is where they are so good. You would think that this push is just unholdable, but you can slowly kill the tanks over and over. Here you go. That disruptor is going to take one hit, but the tank is going to fall. And there we go. There was one Liberator left against two Stalkers. I would have killed it with my next battery overcharge, but the Disruptors take care of the tanks. That is the most important. And that is another unit in the bag. Unit number 11 is going to be the Colossus. This is one of the absolute most difficult challenges in this video. I personally thought we might be able to make it happen against Zerg. Against Terran seemed outright impossible because if Terran has a couple siege tanks or a couple Vikings, it's already over. Against Zerg, I thought maybe. Zer Zerg players tend to play a little greedy because that's how the race works, right? So they make a lot of drones. They try to cut as many units as possible. And then maybe I could hit a timing with like Probe Colossus. I know it sounds really stupid, but that's actually what I had in mind, Probe Colossus. And then against Protoss, well, I mean, I didn't think it was really possible. Maybe if we somehow how miraculously defend it all in but here we are the opponent is a protoss player 5.2k mmr grandmaster protoss actually a very uh long playing protoss player as well i played against this guy in wings of liberty so he definitely has been around for a while i'm gonna be doing my one gate expand as i always like to do i really feel like i've redefined my protoss personality throughout this series i mean the 100 something games that i had to play for this made me just expand on the low ground with one gate in every single matchup doesn't matter if i need two gates or it will be smarter to wall on the high ground i always expand like this and i really like playing like that so i'm allowed to make five gates with units in pvp it's a little bit more tricky because if you make adepts you can do like a little more damage a little more scouting and scouting is very important against protoss because protoss has i don't know how many different elements 25 just so many and adepts are going to be better at scouting that stalkers are going to be a little better at defending Though, this was my thought process here, right? I could make five Stalkers for the anti-air, similar to what I did with the Disruptors. But if my opponent was, like, actually going for Void Race, let's say, five Stalkers are not going to be enough anyway. So I really thought that I could open with a couple of Adepts. I'm going to make two Adepts here and then three Stalkers. Those three Stalkers are going to help me defend. The Adepts are going to help me scout. And then we just hope that we're not playing against Stargate, pretty much. Now, the opponent's playing very weird. That's why I'm scouting everywhere with the probe. The Zealots are pretty bad against the Depths, as I've mentioned before. So this one is going to die very easily. And we find a hidden expansion. This is pretty funny because... I was convinced we were going to find a Stargate or a Proxy Twilight or something, but instead we straight up find a base, which I thought was pretty funny. Now, he did have a planned strategy. I mean, I, I've already played this game, so I know that. I'm not going to spoil what it is, but he did definitely have a planned strategy here. So this is not just a random, um, you know, Proxy Nexus that he has. Now, he tried to get the Scout on, but I did a full wall. Full walling is not super common and he didn't expect it. So I am going to kill the Adept for that, which is really nice. My Robo is going to finish and now I'm going to go for the Robo Bay. Against Protoss, you really have to make every single unit super fast. Even more so if you want to do a challenge. And the reason is that Protoss... If you are a little bit too greedy, they just blink on your stuff and kill you. This, this is the same with Terran, by the way. If you're playing against Blink Stalkers and you're being a little bit greedy, they can just blink on you and kill you. So you need to be very, very careful. Here I can see a couple more gateways being added. This strategy, by the way, is very cool in isolation. Like, I don't necessarily mean the rest of what he's doing. But the fact that he took a base somewhere else and then walls off his natural makes it so I can't know whether he's actually all litting me or making a third base right because taking his natural would be his third base completely walled off so in that case i would need a like an, an oracle for example or an hallucination scout now i did scout the twilight i think it would have been better for him if he built that somewhere else because this is the only place i can scout realistically he doesn't know that i'm playing the colossus challenge with just five gate units right so he was probably expecting me to like make an oracle for example and scout his main base and that's why he built it there now here is my observer this observer just like the last game is just going to stay at home i thought he might be going for dts which you could still go for because he does have a twilight council so i'm going to keep that around and now we're going to start pumping out these colossus here we go now colossi are super 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 good against zealots super good against probes 
I mean, technically good against, like, sentries and high templars if anyone was crazy enough to build us against colossus, but they are bad against stalkers, and the reason is that colossi do a lot of extra damage against light units, stalkers aren't light, and stalkers also do damage against armored, which the colossus is. Colossus do splash damage in a line, and stalkers can just blink on top of them, completely removing that element of the splash damage. So here we go. You can tell it's already going to be a really hard defense here because I have three stalkers against eight. That's why I have to pull all the probes. Now, in this case, I don't mind losing the probes that much because it really is about me getting up a decent Colossus count somewhat. And then, I don't know how, somehow I use that to win the game. Now, notice how my first Colossus is about to pop, but I'm still keeping the probes around. This is because of what I told earlier, that if he blinks on top of my Colossus, I just need something to do damage. And probes, I know they don't sound like they do a lot of damage, but if you blink in them and get surrounded by them, they're going to be pretty good. Here it looks... This is actually funny. Here it looks like a Colossus does absolutely zero damage. But the thing is... It deals damage to multiple stalkers at the same time. So over time, you'll notice that these stalkers are just going to have like zero shields. Here, he's probably going to go for a blink forward. Yeah, exactly. Sadly, there's not enough space here. I wish that was a cliff to the right so my Colossus could escape, but it can't. Now, look. Now, you're going to see very clearly. He's blinking forward with all these stalkers are 1 HP because of the slow, slow splash damage that my Colossus has been dishing out all this time. I used my Adepts to bait him to defend, so that's going to be very nice. Also, these Adepts gave me a super important scout. With these Adepts, I realized that he's just all in. I have somehow, unless he has his uh, third base on his natural, but I don't think he does. I have more economy than him, guys. He had no probes on that natural base. I know that is probably, it could be a five gate, but I think it's a four gate blink stalker all in. And that's why I'm keeping my Colossi super safe. And this is kind of fun. Look at the range, by the way. Once you have the upgrade, oh my goodness, that is shooting from a super far distance away. But I don't really have to defend my low ground. I just want to get enough Colossus off. Here we go. He wanted to die. I'm pretty sure he was one freaking half a second away from blinking at that Colossus. And then my Colossus on the high ground shot. And he was like, nope, I'm out of here. Now, this is going to be a great moment, guys. It looked by the movement of his stalkers that he was going to blink into the main base and then i could trap him there we go like he had eight stalkers only i have four colossus here guys that's going to be so much splash damage he's going to try to kill them but he i think he lost five or six stalkers there and now the colossi don't look that weak anymore all of a sudden for a while i'm sure you guys were thinking like wow this don't do damage any at all to stalkers but if you have four of them guys four of them doing that damage in the line all of a sudden they do kill things super super fast now we are stuck with another problem here I am not allowed a single other gateway unit. Of course, I lost all my defensive gateway units. So I need to attack him pretty fast. Imagine if this guy makes one Void Ray, right? That would be absolutely ridiculous. Now, he might not have the clarity of mind to realize that I'm not going to make any more Stalkers. Sometimes I see criticism in the comments like, wait, why didn't he just make one Void Ray? He obviously doesn't know that I'm not going to be making any more Stalkers. At this point, I wouldn't be surprised if he did go for a stargate just because he sees my gateway is still depowered but even in that case in his mind i can still just make two stargates with more economy than him uh and make anti-air units that way right so that's why he's not going for that directly he's gonna go for a more sensible protos play which is to make a lot of stalkers and go for the outplays here we go i'm gonna attack with six colossus and 20 probes this looks like a very very funny army but obviously now he's gonna blink four but that's six colossus guys now somehow that was still a pretty decent trade for him i think he lost four stalks for one colossus which is still good for for me but despite that it was still better for him than i thought it was gonna be now back at home i have two batteries i already have two colossus out i don't think these colossi are gonna die that fast uh under a battery since he doesn't have that many stalkers anymore i still need to be very very careful and here this is an artosis pylon guys we can kill that pylon that's gonna depower all of his gates he's probably gonna blink forward but i do have the batteries here we go i'm gonna pull the probes and now i can micro over the cliff can it escape with the help of the battery it's even gonna get away there all of his gateways are the power the colossus is still alive and no gg is called and we just beat a solid grandmaster protoss with mass colossus and probes Unit number 12 is going to be the High Templar. Now, like I mentioned in the Dark Templar game, this is going to be the High Templar plus Archon mix. I mean, the Archon is technically an ability of the High Templar, so it's only fair. Now, we are playing against a 5,000 MMR Terran, which is, if you think about it, maybe the hardest match for High Templars because you guys can imagine what Ghosts with EMPs could do against both High Templars and Archons. Now, obviously, I'm going to be harassing the Terran here with my probe, as I always do. Now, this game is a funny one. I do want to warn you guys if 
Let's say you're a Terran player who has been traumatized by probes harassing your workers. You might not want to watch this game because this probe is going to be an absolute demon. And I'm not exaggerating. Like, this might be the strongest probe I've ever had. Uh, so that's promising quite something. Now, this is going to be the last game of the macro category. After this, we're going to go into the third and final category, which is cheese. And there we go. The first worker already goes down. It's a 5 HP probe, so I need to be very, very careful with this. Now, the strategy I had in mind for doing this against Terran was relatively straightforward. I was just hoping that the Terran would attack me early on and then I would just be able to storm his army and get a big enough advantage to win with that later. Like a macro game with Templars and Archons only, it's just, I mean, with the mines and ghosts and not even that, like freaking bunkers, you know, liberators, everything is just super, super, super difficult. I think somehow this is a more difficult version of the sentry only game and i i don't even know why because i templar you would think they have way more value than sentries but this is freaking freaking difficult now my opponent is going to expand on the high ground I, I do have to say by the way we're playing against gumby i know him already because i played him a bunch of times on stream he usually has something funny to say i don't remember if he said something to me but usually he does say something funny here he's gonna let the probe in so it's time to be an absolute demon again start attacking at factory i decided to go for an adept first which i really like to do against terran in this case unlike with disruptors and colossus high templars and archons can actually kill air right so i don't necessarily need five stalkers so here we go my probe is still alive and is in his base my opponent went for a reaper into a reactor instantly which means he doesn't have any marines to kill this probe we're gonna target an SCP and there we go. We kill another SCP and the probe is still alive on 3 HP. And then I'm gonna find this reactor and block it with a pile. Like I'm telling you, this probe is the absolute MVP of this entire video. I killed two workers already and I blocked him switching on top of that reactor. And we're gonna get a third SCP. We get a third SCP as well. And we do fall. Now that probe definitely needs a name. I think we're gonna call him Rick. Rick seems like a cool name for a probe. And there you go. He already says it's a troll game. I mean... It's not like I've been trolling. I just owned him with one probe. That's that's virtually what happened, right? I didn't really do anything else. But all right, here we go. I'm going to go across the map with a couple of depths. And then obviously we're going to have to start going towards High Templars here. Now, I do think it's a good idea to at least get a couple Stalkers. So even though I really like three Adepts, you know, they one-shot most of Terran units. Should have just killed it? True. Definitely should have just killed it. It was an absolute demon. I mean, I was hiding it. Uh, so I'm not sure if you could have find it. But there we go. Three Adepts, really nice against Terran. There is a Widow Mine, unfortunately, for me. Now, this is not necessarily meant to do any serious damage. I'm more here to just get a little bit of scouting to annoy him, to convince him that the threat of these adepts is real more than anything else. Now, he's finally going to be able to land that uh, barracks over there. And there, I baited. I tried to bait the Widow Mine shot with the shade. I don't think he, I got it because he micro too well. He unburrowed it. And these adepts are giving me so much scouting. It's funny. Like, he made so little units. At first, he got owned by the pro, but now there's a couple adepts that are really just, you know, letting me know everything he's doing. I can see that the medevac is still at home. Now I see that the medevac has left. So that gives me the information that the window by drop is on the way. Now, I guess I might as well get a little value out of these units since I have them anyway. I mean, adepts don't kill buildings at all, really. So he doesn't have to worry about his reactor dying or something. But still, I feel like these adepts have definitely done a significant amount of work. And that's the funny part, too. Is that because of the probe delaying the reactor? There we go. Feedback on the medevac. I don't think he has ever seen that defense before. Now, the thing here is I don't have a robo yet. I don't have a forge either, I believe. So I'm not going to have detection. And it does appear that he has an armory on these. I have to say, by the way, this opening is shockingly popular. When I was playing Protoss against Terran, like all these games, I don't know how many games I played against Terran, uh, you know, to get the material for this video in total. I want to guess that it's probably about 50 games. I see the cloaked Widow Mine drop so often. Now, you, you terror players, I know I'm a terror player in Harbor. You, you guys are nasty, okay? Trying to get me with the armory with the mine jobs. I see how it is. Now, I'm kind of in a funny predicament here because I... I can technically kill the Widow Mines with Storm, but that also feels a little stupid, right? But it would help me out a little bit. I'm going to go across with two Templars, and I think now you can already see why this challenge is so difficult and honestly pretty funny, because i it's almost six minutes in the game. I've had a really good start. There we go. I wasn't sure if I was going to do it, but I started anyway. We had a really good start, and that leads me to moving across the map with one Stalker and two Templars as my army. I mean, at least I'm going to get cannons up, so I'm not going to die to that. I'm very, very excited about trying to store his army, though, and seeing what I can possibly do with that. Dude, I wonder how much damage the High Templar auto attack does. It literally seems like it does no damage. Like, is it two? I thought it was like four or five, but it actually looks like it's two. Watch this. Here we go. 
A really big storm on the marine, but not enough to finish them off. I don't quite have enough energy for the second storm, but now we do. And at one tick, I think, killed six marines instantly. So it ended up working out in the end. And this is what I have to do. Like, think about it, guys. If I'm in the late game, I mean... As long as I'm not playing as like freaking battle cruisers or a lot of liberators. Templars can do well against bio, but you need the setup. I need cannons everywhere. I need a lot of gases so I can actually afford Templars to storm with nonstop. And I can only achieve that level of late game if I deal random bits of damage to here, there, and here, here and there. Like if I kill six Marines, his push later is just going to be weaker. Like it only makes sense, right? So you, you moves like that, super, super important. I'm also going up to four bases already. This is a pretty funny thing. Because it seems like I'm being ultra greedy and a little bit ridiculous. But the thing is, I can't possibly get enough gas otherwise to make Templars. Like, you know, I've been making like a lot of cannons and stuff and still. Now look how strong these Archons are. I'm just going to go in here. Archons, by the way, Archons do not die to Terran units beside Widow Mines or Ghost. Like, you see how long they take to die? They're still not dead. I just walked in there. Then a dire army, tanks, SUVs, got a bunch of free damage, and now I'm going to go back. I feel like this is also a really cool thing about StarCraft. If you know exactly how unit interactions work, because most of the time you wouldn't think of it that way. You would think that Archons, good against Marines, bad against Ghost, and that's it. But I know that Archons are, like, disproportionately hard to kill without Widow Mines or Ghost. Like, they... Tanks don't do any damage to Archons. Bar units kill them way too slow. So you can do really creative, crazy moves like that if you're just, like, fully aware of how the units interact. And then at the same time, once the Ghosts are out, you know, you know you're going to have to split your units across because if you get all your units EMP'd, uh, then you're just going to cry. Now, there's, uh, this is actually funny. There's one Widow Mine there, but look at what's happening here. It's targeting the worker that's going onto the gas, so it doesn't target it long enough to go off because it... Either it would shoot in the gas, right? Which 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 it can. So here we go. I'm gonna kill him with one stalker. I'm gonna pull the pros away because this is gonna cause an alert. So maybe he would have looked and retargeted the mine. But that was actually pretty nice. I definitely didn't intend to do that, but I guess it, it saved me a couple pro blows, so that's fantastic. Now you can see even widow mines. Pretty tough to deal with if you only have Templars. I mean, if I was able to warp 10 more stalkers, it wouldn't be that big of a deal, but the Templar auto attack, definitely not, uh, not that fantastic. Now, one unit that I would absolutely have loved to have in this challenge that I'm not allowed to build, sadly, is going to be the warp prism. Storm drops, absolutely beautiful mechanic i already loved it in brood war when people didn't really do it uh, but in starcraft 2 storm is just absolutely brutal you can drop them and storm with them so cleanly so fast and it's absolutely annihilate everything with it like if i had three prisms for those templars my opponent would be having a nightmare right now now there we go gonna go up to my fifth base here i'm gonna be using those storms Let's see, I'm going to bait the tank shot. No, that doesn't look like there's a tank. Oh my god, absolutely massive storms there. And he's going to back off. I'm going to morph an Archon with that. Though that bio army did look a little bit too big for my Archons. The only reason I would fight is if he was too clumped and too low HP while chasing me. So for now, I'm going to run away. It is very tempting to turn on that, but his army is just a little bit too big realistically. Now, I wonder if he's not going to have mass ghosts anytime soon. I could really just attack him with Archons. So far, I was just relying on building... Um, you know, mostly Templars. But if he's not going to go for Ghost, then I can really just attack him with a million Archons. Now, it's kind of funny. We arrived at the point where I don't really care about the harassment anymore. This is one thing that's really nice about Protoss. With Chrono Boost, you build probes in like eight seconds, I believe. So if you have five next time, I'm not going to do the math right now because I'm tired and I would probably mess it up. But you can do the math how fast you can replenish a mineral line with five next time. It's incredibly fast. So if an auto turret kills four probes, like it, it literally doesn't matter. Like, it's not like I need to Chrono Boost to make more Templars at this point, right? Like, we're fine. Like, maybe if I was making a specific unit to counter something like a, a Colossus or something or a Disruptor, then, then maybe Chrono Boost would be nice. But otherwise, I really don't need it. Looks like he was going to go for a little bit of a run by. Oh, those Templars sadly didn't have Storm. That would be beautiful. And this is one of the moves that I wanted to make. I know this looks absolutely crazy, but remember what I said about having to do damage to get myself to a good late game? I'm running by and doing a lot of economic damage. And this is super, super, super awkward for the Terra to get back into i'm not gonna give him the time to just emp right he's having to walk through the storms taking all these hits just to clean up this uh, you know these archons and be able to mine again and this fight was absolutely incredible for us it looks like we killed almost his entire army he has a couple units left and those units are going to be enough uh, to take care of this now look at this guys he is not going to use the emp here look how slow these archons die without emp it is so funny i'm standing in the middle of like 10 by and it's just absolutely wrecking his suvs and now we have the five base setup that i wanted once again 
Hey, look at what I'm doing. I'm not even pulling anything away. I just chrono boost every single Nexus and that's it. I know these uh, pros are going to be back in no time. And there's the added benefit. Well, it sounds kind of weird to call that a benefit. But there's the added benefit of playing Templars only. Is that I don't really need minerals. So as long as I have the gases mining, it really doesn't matter that I lose these pros. I can just rebuild them all the time. I'm going to do another run by with two Templars storming his SUVs. And our opponent decided to give up. And this was an absolutely brutal game for the opponent. Look at the resources. Look at the map i was even efficient here just making templars against bio tank goes this is absolutely brutal and i templars has been completed now it's time for the last category let's do some cheeses the first unit of the cheese category and 13th unit overall is going to be the zealot now i think some of you have been looking forward to the zealot where's the zealot you thermo it's a basic you gotta put the zealot in there it's gonna be in the cheese category now i do want to add as a rule the cheese category uh, it's also pure, so there's not a, like, it's not like I'm allowed to proxy five stalkers and zealots or something. No, no, no. With the cheese category, it's also pure, only zealot, only mortal, and only probes, of course, for that final game. Uh, but here we go. We're playing against a Zerg, 5.2 gamma bar, really good Zerg. I think he beat me in one of my other challenges, not quite sure what it was. And now we're going to try to take revenge on him by highlighting him in this single unit only Protoss video four gateways uh it's gonna produce a little zealots i do think this build it's very hit or miss it can be pretty decent this is one of those builds you could use as a lower mmr player to just try and get easy wins but at the same time if someone scouts your base and just starts a bunch of spines and makes a roach ward, most of the time they are going to be able to defend your attack and then it doesn't look that good. But, I mean, it still has its purpose. So, the Zerg is obviously going to be in the bottom right, hopefully going for a hatch first. I do imagine if you play against a pool first, you would probably die right away. Now, this is going to be a fun game to relax a little with because... For most of my units so far, I always had like this detailed strategy of this is what I want and this is how many bases I want to take and this is my setup and I need this many gases, blah, blah, blah. There is admittedly not that much strategy you can do for a four gate zealot. Like you're really just going to go in there and micro your zealots. That's the only difference I can make. I wasn't even sure how many zealots I wanted to wait for. I mean, this just seemed like a good point because I get number two and three really soon after one another. And now my opponent already scouts it. That's honestly a little earlier than I would have expected or would have hoped for, rather. And now he had a drone across. Wait, did he want to go? F uh, I think he wanted to go for a really fast third hatch or he wanted to proxy a hatch in my base. It seemed like he wanted to do something aggressive because he already has six Zerg. Here we're going to go. The reason why I'm going so fast is exactly for this. I figured he was going to be making a lot of spines so i had to get in there super fast there we go now this is a really cool move by the way there's actually oh there's one thing that you can do i didn't think you could make this build much better but that's one thing you can do here's a good tip you can right click the spine crawler and then sometimes what they will do is they'll try to micro their zergings to attack you sometimes right so what you want to do is you want to attack the spine and then just hold position next to it so they're going to slice the zerglings attacking your zealot when in range and otherwise attack the spine here i'm switching between the spine and drones because the spines are going to kill my zealots but if he wants to fight with the drones combined i'm going to kill his drones and now i know it sounds absolutely hilarious guys but i think my economy is better than his the worst part for me is that he has a roach war and roaches are incredibly good good against zealots but i do have seven zealots or eight zealots already actually with four more on the way and my economy is quite quite decent here now the sad thing for me is that i don't really have a transition if you think about it my only transition is to make gas Cybercore, Twilight Council, and get charged because that's also Zealots. Now he has two more spines. I think I got one of the spines. He has two or three more spines. Uh, and then besides that, oh, I think he might have canceled one to be able to afford roaches. Yeah, he has two more spines and a bunch of Ravagers. I have to admit, guys, I think going for Ravagers here was a pretty big mistake, to be fair, because the Ravagers, I mean, roaches are also super good against Zealots. Like, you don't necessarily need Ravagers for that. But still, guys, he is going to hold my attack, and now I only have Zealots, so what am I going to do after this? That is the question. Ravagers do have have that big advantage of being able to go off creep a little easier though i still think i really prefer him to go for roaches pull a few drones out of gas ravagers are very gas expensive he didn't know so that's he mined a little too much gas and that's why he made ravagers if he was maybe a little more attentive to the economy he could have stopped mining gas made a couple more roaches instead and it probably would have been more powerful now the reason why i'm splitting my zealots is like this is because if he ever ignores one part i'm gonna use that part to run into his base yeah this is really really good for us like i know it it seems bad because he's gonna kill my pilots and i won't be able to rebuild but those 10 zealots are gonna kill his entire economy guys there's nothing he's gonna do to stop it i think a couple more of those zealots are probably gonna finish because uh there's three pilots powering that 
Like, spine crawlers are good, guys, but are they 10 zealot good? I don't think so. Here we go. I'm gonna attack. The first spine is gonna fall very fast. He put that a little bit too far forward as well. He's very likely to also lose all of his drones. And the worst part, perhaps, for him is that it's super hard to micro at two fronts against zealots at the same time because the zealots don't require micro. I think he's lost the ravager. And there we go. The 5.2k MMR Zerg falls to the zealot only rush. The 14th unit is going to be the Immortal. Proxy Immortal we're playing against a 5,000 MMR Protoss player. And I believe it is actually the same Protoss player as we played against in the Colossus only challenge. So he was definitely a little bit of a victim of our uh, robotics facility antics. Now, I always thought that this cheese was going to be done against Terran. Proxy Immortal is a pretty, I wouldn't say common, but it's an, it's an accepted cheese. You know, it's been done before. People have done it with success, even in big matches. But the thing is, against Terran, I tried it so many times, guys, I really did. But without the Warp Prism, it's just, it's so much harder to actually get in there. The Prism is what makes it strong. You can drop, like, on top of the first Siege Tank, really get in there. And when you get that momentum rolling, it's going to be way, way, way stronger. Otherwise, I, yeah, without the Prism, I just really couldn't make it happen against Terran. I had a lot of frustrating moments against Terran, just trying to brute force it, make it work. Uh, but I just couldn't. And now here we are playing against a 5,000 MMR Protoss player. And here, what I'm doing right now seems very absurd. If, if, if you're watching this, you're not used to like high level meta, gameplay, etc. What I'm doing right now seems absolutely absurd, right? I'm building it literally in front of his base. Like I, I, I'm not even joking. Like it's literally right there, right? His natural, his gateway is probably like one screen away from the robo robotics facility right now. And the reason why I'm doing this is because it's kind of like hiding in plain sight, right? Protoss players will scout everywhere around their base to find a proxy Stargate or perhaps even more common, just a proxy third gate or fourth gate to align you with. So I'm going to build it right in front of his base because I genuinely believe this might be the last place he's going to check for. And it's really nice for me that he's one gate expanding. One gate expanding is meta. Here I'm starting a couple gateway units, which I'm obviously going to be canceling. And what I'm doing with all of this stuff, I'm just faking them out as much as I can. The robotics facility placement is meta. The pilot in the corner of his base is also just meta to scare him. Maybe he's going to send stalkers to kill it because he's afraid that I will warp adepts in his base, which is a very, you know, realistic thing to be afraid of. I even faked the two adepts here. Now, what sucks for me? Oh, he's making a cannon. That's a really good scout. Let's see. I'm, I'm going to have to cancel those adepts. Did I cancel them already? Yeah, I did cancel them. I'm uh, a little bit unlucky here that my opponent didn't leave my main base because he probably should have run away from the adepts, but instead he didn't. Here we go. There's a stalker in the main. This is another thing Thing that's going in our favor because he is not going to be able to scout in front of his base if its units are there. Now, all these cannons are just fakes. Like, I'm trying to scare him. I'm trying to push him away. Perhaps most importantly, push him away from making a Stargate. A Stargate is something you would make instantly against a proxy Stargate, for example. You want to have your own Void Race. But here, since he was most likely more scared by the fact that there's a freaking pile in his base... Uh, he might just make more gate instead of a Stargate, which is really good for us. And here we go. I'm going to be able to take down one of those cannons before the battery finish, which is used. The second one, barely not, I think. Yeah, so I'm going to have to back off. Battery overcharge was activated. And the thing is, guys, if you don't scout this, I have so many Immortals. I, I think I literally have as many Immortals as he has Stalkers. Okay, he has one more. My bad, guys. Fine. My third one is about to finish. He's trying to micro, but I also have the micro skills. And now I'm also getting batteries in front of his base. That's going to make that so much stronger. Going to have to pull that red immortal to the back. And now we're going to go for it. Keep in mind, guys, he doesn't have the battery overcharge anymore. These, these immortals can almost one-tap those stalkers. I'm going to get in there. Look at the stalkers just absolutely disappearing. That was almost full health. Canceling the cannons as well. And now I can even target the pylons. He's pulling the pros with my battery finish. So these immortals are gonna get healed up forever and at some point if i get those piles like i think i wait is that his only pile he's defending it so hard i'm starting to wonder if that's the only one doesn't look like it though but guys this is four immortals against two cannons i'm getting supply block here a little bit because i was focused on the micro but here we go the pilot is it's only one pilot for four cannons and a battery i take down the pilot micro the red immortal to the back and that is going to be it the immortals succeed against the 5k protoss the final unit of this challenge is going to be the probe. And as you can see there, I am putting down a forge. I think a lot of you have been looking forward to this from the start when I mentioned that I was even going to do probes. We're playing against a 5246 MMR Grandmaster Protoss, which is a very, very high, of course. And this map, guys, this map is incredibly good for cannon rush. Like, really, really good. And that's why I was happy that I got this map in this situation. Now, 
when you do a cannon rush, you typically don't want to make too many probes. Just a little bit of a tip I can give you. I mean, the thing is, normally you're allowed to build units, right? I'm not allowed to build units besides probes, so I want to commit 100%. What you could do is make probes slowly, like without chrono boost, and just very slowly get more and more and more going. But you can see already why this map is so good for cannon rush, guys. This cannon... It's super close to the Nexus. I literally only need one more cannon. It's already touching the Nexus. I'm, I'm kind of surprised that this is not being complained about because this seems freaking insane. Like, literally, the Cannabis is right there. Now he's going to pull his probe. I was distracting him so much. I think he was probably distracting himself a little bit, to be fair, because my probe scout was so early. He should have been distracted. Now, he might have walled me out. Oh, he hasn't walled me out. That means I'm going to be able to get more cannons in. He's going to try to target the probes. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stay across the line of the base close to my can i'm gonna start two more one of those is gonna be able to attack the gateway uh this is, it, it is a little bit scary for my probe like he could dive my probe and this is obviously going to be my only way to win so i'm gonna have one can in range of the gateway i'm making a gateway at home which is obviously just a fake right like i'm just trying to get him to think like oh he's not 100 percent committed even he realized i was not gonna build a single unit this game he might just build a nexus somewhere else and then he would be in a good spot. So just like the entire challenge, we have to keep faking over and over. Now that Zealot is already going to take a lot of damage here. Cannons have a lot of range, so he will not be able to reach that. I kind of wish that I, you know, I canceled the, uh, what's it called? I canceled the gateway and the gasser to make more, but maybe it's just a little bit too scary to do that. Now, if I would have to guess... He is probably making shield batteries up somewhere. Yeah, he already has one. He can overcharge it. Oh, he doesn't have money or what's it called? Energy for an overcharge. So the shield battery is going to be drained. There's a lot of cannons here. And stalkers are good. But cannons are actually better at a one-on-one -on -one by far. Like, cannons are super good against stalkers. As you can see, even with the battery, two stalkers are not managing to defeat these two cannons. There are so many cannons in his mineral line. He's going to lose one of those stalkers. He might be building a robo somewhere. That's the thing I was afraid of the most. He might be building a robo somewhere, but no it all took in too much money and that is going to be it for this video guys 15 units all completed including the probe it was the hardest challenge i've ever done thank you all for watching if you're still here you're an absolute legend by the way i might try this with zerg i'm not sure if it's possible with zerg but i'll try my best hope you guys really enjoyed this video if you're still here definitely like definitely leave a comment subscribe to the channel and then see you all for my next challenge adios